What is going on, everybody? It is episode 416 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett. I'm here with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Today in the studio, we have a dynamic duo. (laughs) One of them is a returning guest. Hi, Xavier. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm very well. Blessed and highly favored. (laughs) And another PragerU influencer. Hello, CJ. Hey, thanks for having us. We're really happy you're here. We were we were talking with CJ beforehand about Mary's favorite song, Try That in a Small Town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she loves it. Try and, that in a small pound town. The yep. next pound remix town with town. Sexy Red. Uh, no, <laughs> apparently there's a Ben Shapiro video of him now doing the lyrics to pound. Like, no, I already yeah, saw that okay, one. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, he needs to just do a whole album where he just dryly sings the lyrics to, to raps, to, to vulgar rap songs. It's incredible. You, you know, funny story about Sexy Red. Me and her actually recently got into a Twitter fight oh. because I, you you know, I did the same thing. Speaking of try that in a small town, I was like, how are we going to cancel Jason Aldean for try that in a small town when you have the mayor of pound town herself, sexy red talking about her coochie and, and, and all of these things and how she wants to find a new pappy for her son. And so <laughs> I, I, I tweeted at her. I said, you know, you rap about your vagina a lot. Have you ever tried saying anything impactful? And, and she didn't like that. And wow. um, so I've been feuding with sexy red. I'm currently at war with pound town. Um, <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll see. You're we'll at see. the gates. <laughs> I am at the gates of Pound Town, and I'm about to. You're sieging Pound Town, and I'm about to bring God into Pound Town. Well, like, you know, it could oh, use I'm a obsessed. church. Pound Town could use a church. It yeah. really could. Even, need, even, huh. even Los Alamos had a church when they were building the the nuke, right? Uh, I watched Oppenheimer last week. Like that. <laughs> All right, guys, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about this weekend. Or this weekend, today, we are going to free. We're going to check in with you guys, and we're going to talk yeah. about what you guys have been doing. But we're also going to talk about Andrew Tate. There is a, a bunch of leaked text messages that have come out that highlight and really show his procedure when he is um, recruiting models for a cam site that supposedly was shut down over 10 years ago. So we'll, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Uh, there's a, a Rolling Stone article that gives great detail to all this. So we're gonna discuss that. Doja Cat has gone to war with her fans, and her fans want an apology. We talked about her the other day fighting with them, but now her fans, much like the unionizing Taylor Swift fans, <laughs> they want an apology from her in writing. I'm starting to side with Doja here. Yeah, like, dude. get a job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on her side. We, yeah. we, we got, got a twenty dollar from Shane H. Wilder. He said, "Stealth watching at the day job, but I just wanted." To to applaud Mary for the Twitter thread last night and the update this morning. Keep it up and God bless. Also great to see these excellent guests. Oh, hi, Brett. Thanks. I appreciate being the afterthought there. It's my favorite part. Uh, Do you want to give everyone an update on what's going on with that, Mary? Sure. I I don't know uh, how much detail I can really go into because I've said everything that I know at this point, but essentially... There was a protester at Charlottesville in 2017 who was unfortunately photographed and his image was circulated by the mainstream media to defame him. And he never, you know, got involved in any violence there. Mm -hmm. He was present for that, you know, Tiki Torch March uh, and he was right there front and center on all of these headlines. And he's just been trying to get back to his normal life for the past six years, just trying to, you know, get an education, work just function as a normal adult human being. And he was only 20 years old when he went there. Um, His name is Peter Satanovich, if you didn't know. Uh, You can Google more about him, uh, but his Wikipedia page also defames him as a white supremacist. Um, And now he's 26, and yesterday morning he was arrested on a fugitive warrant from Charlottesville, Virginia. And he didn't even know that this warrant existed. And now he's in jail my update is just that he's in a medical unit and we don't currently know the reason why. Okay, well let's wow. uh, keep wow. everything. So prayers for him. I'm gonna keep updating with whatever I know and if I find a way that people can support him financially or otherwise, I'm gonna be posting about it on Twitter. It's scary when you think about what uh, what can be done when you don't even know there's a warrant out on you. And like I said, as far right. as I know, like uh, like statute limit, like what were the charges again? Uh, his official charge is intimidating okay. a public officer, which okay. is totally unfounded. And I would imagine that statute of limitations is suspended if he left the state, so yeah. they can they can hold on to that for as, as long as they want. So. And really, this is important because it has to do with everyone's right to protest peacefully and engage in dissident politics, especially going forward after Dan Six happened. Yeah. So, yeah, just wanted to call attention to that as much as possible. And if you guys see it, please share it. 
Okay. All right. But we're going to, that, that is a very serious topic. We're going to. Now we're, we're going to get into some <laughs> stupid stuff. Yeah. We're going to keep things light today, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's get started first. But before we do, would you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already? Thank you very much for that. Remember that all Super Chats, $20 and over, just like the one from Shane H. Wilder. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read them right then and there. And then I will do my level best to get my foggy brain to get us right back on topic. I think I actually do that pretty well these days. But uh, feel free to test my ability to do so if you so desire. All right, let's get started first, ladies and gentlemen. So this is a very interesting story because I think this could uh, sh uh, shed a little bit of light on the narrative that uh, people have about women in Hollywood. So Tina Fey could take over for Lorne Michaels on Saturday Night Live. This is a big deal because this is one of those things that people always think that they're complaining about women getting jobs in Hollywood. Uh, are they promoting women too much? Is it is it a narrative like this? I don't think anybody in, in the world would actually have a problem with Tina Fey taking over as the head of Saturday Night Live because she as a performer, as a producer, as an all-around powerhouse in Hollywood has proven herself over a lot of years. Whatever you think of sure. her politics or what she's like, I don't know. I don't think anyone thinks Tina Fey like, is getting affirmative action into this position, but mm. I don't think SNL is <laughs> yeah. salvageable at this point. Well, no, I, I didn't say it would make it funny again. I'm yeah. just saying that she's not uh, like she's not. Tina going Fey to be herself as, uh, is funny. I just don't think any of the new people on SNL are funny. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it hasn't really been in the last thing I liked was that Levi Wokes skit in 2017. That's a long. That time was a ago. long time ago. <laughs> yeah. It's it's this amazing skit where they talk about uh, genderless style neutral denim. Um, it's, it was it's actually nobody, so it's it fits everybody. Yes, yeah. it was it was uh, it was actually quite prophetic, considering the world we live in now. It, <laughs> it actually is. It takes the absurdity that's now our real lives and jokes about it. Yeah. So, and, and that wasn't that. I mean, I guess it's a long time ago now, but that was the last time Saturday Night Live was actually funny. That and the. Um, it was a little bit funny when they did the uh, the dark and gritty Mario thing with Pedro Pascal, where where he's like it's like supposed to be the Last of Us, but he's the, he's Mario, and it's 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 like basically dark and gritty Mario Kart. That was actually kind of funny. I yeah. haven't seen that. That was one. the last. That was the last. No, it was kind of funny. So just an update for you guys there that that it is possible because Lauren Michaels is like seventy eight and he's going to be eighty <laughs> when they have their fiftieth anniversary. So basically, the you idea can still is like, run for president. You can still run SNL. It's well, not that you, big of a deal. You can still do that if you if you, you want to run for president. Now all the presidents like it's really funny too because like you look at it and like every year for like the last thirty or forty years everyone's like we need younger people mm -hmm. in office, but it just keeps getting older and older and older and older and older. Like it doesn't, the age doesn't go down. It only seems to go up. And now you have politicians just freezing at the podium. Yeah. Just lost in the sauce. Maybe was, the minimum age for yeah. presidency should be lowered. Ooh, like for CJ Pearson. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah. no, I think we got to cap it. I, I, I think cap it. I think, I think the third, what is it? 35 to be, to be president. Yeah, I think minimum. open it up to 30 plus. 35 is fine with me. I, I think 35 is fine. Like yeah. we'll uh, see. you're still working off your twenties and your. I just early want 30s. Baron to get get his his shoe in the door, you know. Like, he will his very big shoe. He yeah, has like, what his like seven, size fourteen three? shoe. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. He's going to the league, guys. He's going to the league. Um, all right, guys. Uh, if you are a fan of Star Wars, and I know most of you are as disillusioned with Star Wars as anyone could possibly be, Donald Glover is taking over the writing for the Lando series, which a lot of people had previously believed was dead in the water. So that might be good news, depending on if you're a fan of of his writing. I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of, of um, Childish Gambino than I am of Donald Glover, if I'm, <laughs> being, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, Tim and his brother, yeah. Apo baby, much. Uh, that in like they're saying it's uh, Justin's. Uh, I, I never know how to pronounce his name. It's Simeon, I believe, who originally was tapped mm -hmm. to pen the series. He's got the Haunted Mansion movie that's coming out this weekend. I may still go see that. I'm not 110 percent sure. Uh, nobody, really, nobody really wanted it's a, to. Everyone's like, everyone's like, I don't really want to go. I'm like, fine then. The guys. first one with Eddie Murphy <laughs> scarred me for life, so I am not going to be revisiting those memories. <laughs> so good. Like, I was so scared of the first Haunted Mansion that I would like wake up from a nightmare and literally throw up. It was not that scary. No. <laughs> but way. I just, I maybe I was just a sensitive kid. Thank you guys. I had the, I had the camera mixed up. I, it was in three camera mode, not four camera mode. Thank you guys. Oops. That was my fault. <laughs> I, we've been doing three person shows here lately. So, what, what, what? How old were you when you saw it? Oh, probably like. Eight, eight, nine. Maybe I was just a, an innocent kid because I feel like you should not be that scared of Haunted Mansion. Probably by then. Yeah, I don't remember it being that scary. I was probably <laughs> was like it? seven or eight when I when it came out. I think. 
I, I barely know. remember it. I remember the ring had me traumatized. Like I couldn't look really? at my TV. Yeah. Because I watched the ring after you everyone compared ring. me to the girl in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and it's That's not that scary. Of, uh, if no. so, if it's someone not scary. crawled out of my TV, I would snap my own neck immediately. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not fighting a witch who just mm-hmm. crawled out of my TV. Like, be serious. No, thank you. No, you would Google you. Taken and then run into the woods. Exactly. Oh, uh, and, and maybe Isn't look- Carly Russell your cousin? Xavier? My cousin? <laughs> my cousin would never snatch off her own wig and pretend like she got kidnapped. I mean, she would take the Cheez-Its in the woods with her, but uh, that's about all the relation. Do you want to tell everybody? Like, Because that, that was a story. Like, That was one of those ones where like, just because of what, like, what we do, I would pass by that story every day, mm-hmm. but it wasn't really our purview. Do you want to tell everybody what was going on with that? Yeah, so basically Carly Russell called her family member saying that she saw a toddler wandering on the side of the interstate so then she pulled over and called the police and told them the same thing or actually other way around she called the police and told them and then as she was on the phone with a family member she like started screaming and there was this huge campaign all over twitter and instagram and the whole country was united to try to find Car- carly russell then it ended up coming out that she had pretended like she was abducted she snatched off her own wig <laughs> threw it in her back seat grabbed her bag of cheetos and then ran into the woods and then the gag is that she was so idiotic she left her phone in the car and her phone said on there that uh she was looking up the movie taken two she was looking up how Wait, much why the said- sequel <laughs> yeah. why this I, I need to know why the sequel was the first yeah. one was the first one not enough like she wanted to be taken three i, gu- I guess in the <laughs> first i guess in the first one they she is abducted in eastern europe so maybe it was like i'm looking for a stateside abduction movie not like a like a nationwide like a um international abduction yeah. movie that's crazy. Yeah, and she's looking up like how much does it cost for an Amber Alert? And then I'm like sitting here zooming. I was so concerned. I was zooming yeah. on the, the video. She was crouched over at one point. I'm like, does a midget have her in a headlock? Like I don't <laughs> know what was going on with this girl, but she's fine it's, apparently. It's a, and, and she had her no she had her parents go on TV and say, you know, she's so shaken up. She's gone through all of this. Like her parents went on national television gone because they thought what? their daughter <laughs> had been kidnapped. And it's like to embarrass did your the family like know? that. Is, did her parents know? No. Oh, okay. okay. I thought that the parents were like in on it with her. No, they didn't know. <laughs> okay. I think so they're defending her, but she conveniently got you know dropped what? off at her house. Good for them. That's loyalty. That's ride or die. true loyalty. Right I would snitch on my kids. <laughs> wait, wait, didn't uh, didn't like Shuan on had, had like a thing recently? She's like, she's like, she's like, yes, I'm biased towards my friends on social media. Like, I'm not gonna turn on them. Go on with your bad take. Like, it's, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn on you just because you got a bad. It's take. a little worse than a bad take. You no, know, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's just. <laughs> I'm not going down with anybody. I, I'm very anti going to jail. So if it involves <laughs> yeah. jail time, that's on you. Most people are anti going to jail. Most <laughs> emphasis on most it's crazy like that's that like you hear those stories and then they're like well what about like why are people so suspicious of people these days like why do people ask questions that's why people ask questions you know I do want to point attention to that too really quick I mean you have like movies like Sound of Freedom right now talking about how major of an issue human trafficking is you have what is it five hundred thousand new American children going missing every single year I was very concerned also about this toddler that's allegedly walking on the street and being used as bait so like you have now poked fun at the issue of abducting children and also um there were so many people on like black twitter and in black culture who were talking about how missing black women are just this epidemic that nobody is talking about there are thirteen thousand missing black women now who have their stories discredited yeah. because of what carly russell did so that's a very yeah. serious mm-hmm. issue yeah. Yeah. yeah uh and, and did did carly russell ever explain why she did it she refuses to she, talk to the media refuses to talk to police i mean she, we know why she did it she's mentally yeah. ill well yeah. i mean I, but also like fame and like people want clout in any way they can get it right like meanwhile I, this woman on the plane who said that mf is not real hasn't nope. spoken to any of the media yeah, she's, so she's still on her it cruise. wasn't about clout she was being serious do you believe her i think that mf was not real <laughs> i say don't I take agree. Ambien and fly. i think she was yeah. right that that would be my guess yeah. was don't don't take Ambien i felt represented fly. finally <laughs> <laughs> in media perfect as a crazy white woman all I think right. there was a super chat too that we oh yeah oh only for the $20 ones oh, yeah, yeah. alright yeah. alright All right. let's move on ladies and gentlemen if you're worried about uh, a sequel to Barbie you don't have to worry about that because they're making a Polly Pocket movie and it's going to star Lily Collins from Emily in Paris uh, and Lena Dunham is going to direct and I don't know where they dragged Lena Dunham out from under but I haven't seen her in a very long time yes. like, like I, Mary was like should I watch girls I'm like I don't think you'd like girls 
I, I mean, it's very graphic, which is what yeah. I hate. And that's what I hated about Emily in Paris, too. I was like, oh, it's like a fun show where she wears cute outfits and she has a, an Instagram account. But mm. then in the very first episode, she has like graphic FaceTime sex with her boyfriend. And I'm like, okay, no, I'm turning this off now. Have you found any shows that you really, you actually you oh, were telling yeah, me earlier, I, so. I specifically asked Twitter for recommendations of like sexless shows that don't mm. like bombard you with nudity and sexuality and i started watching the bear because somebody recommended it and it's really good i watched the first season you, I'm gonna you heard go to it the here first soon ladies and gentlemen i finally like a tv show something <laughs> mary <laughs> likes something M mary this has a news. tendency to not like much of anything <laughs> alert the media <laughs> yeah like it, it's worth writing honestly the, the ending of this first season was so good that they could have just ended it there and not renewed it at all it was like the mm -hmm. ending of lost but if people actually liked the ending of lost mm -hmm. So I imagine really if you don't like if you don't like Emily in Paris, you definitely didn't like The Idol. With uh, I didn't even try to watch The oh Idol because I already knew what it was going to be. I feel like you should watch it and review Anything it. Anything made by Sam Levinson, yeah, I just yeah. write it off because he just goes for the shock value and yeah. the hypersexuality. He's obviously a perv. <laughs> I mean, come on. Any shows you guys like uh, have watched recently? Are you guys watching anything? Right now, doesn't have to be new. Or if, if there's well, there's a you... writer's strike, so there's not yeah. much new yeah. to watch. Um, I've been watching. I've been rewatching Suits, which is still really good. Uh, 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 those first four to five seasons of yeah. Suits are are incredible. Yeah, like, in incredible television, especially when you think of like now. One of my big complaints is TV just takes itself too damn seriously. Mm -hmm. It's just too damn serious all the time. Why is everybody in such a bad mood? I was yeah. trying to watch the Justified reboot, mm -hmm. and it's just it's just not fun like yeah. it's it's got nothing none of the none of the the levity that came from the like the really really bad characters were always really really oddly enjoyable to mm -hmm. watch in that original in the new one everyone just it's got one of my favorite actresses which is Anjanu Ellis and um and it had uh Keith uh Keith David uh, uh David Keith mm -hmm. and it's like Everyone's in a bad mood. Everyone's upset. Yeah. It's it's tinged with dark, dark, t like to like dark blue. Whereas the old show was like it was like light, and it took place during the day, and just all of it is depressing. Suits is the opposite of that. Yeah. Suits takes very like unique, serious subject matter a lot of the time, mm -hmm. and finds a way to make it enjoyable because all the characters are unique. Yeah, yeah. Get, big Harvey guy. Big, big Harvey, Harvey guy. guy. Love Harvey not, not a Lewis guy. Not a Lewis no. guy. Or a, no, or no, a no. Jessica Pearson. I'm a Jessica Pearson so guy. So I'm biased Pearson. to her because of the last name. And, you know, I think I, I like her. And she, I, I just Gina love Torres the dramatics. Is, yeah, uh, I love the Torres dramatics. Is, did you see the spinoff that they I, did of? I couldn't watch it. It, it was, wasn't too bad. It was. It, they got like 10 episodes, right? Mm. Like they, they got about 10 episodes. But usually like when a, when they do a spinoff after a show that's been on for like eight years, you're you're really risking it. Yeah. Those Walking Dead spinoffs aren't exactly lighting up the charts mm -hmm. right now. Mm -mm. But Suits was Suits was great. It yeah. Also, it also survived past Mike, like it did yeah. because it had to, early on in that show. You had to figure out like who's the main character. Is it Harvey mm -hmm. or is it Mike? Mike is portrayed as the main character because he's who you're introduced to the world to. Mm -hmm. But Harvey is the one who you really um, gets the most. It feels like gets the most love. Yeah, right. Then sure. and, and and it even survived Meghan Markle. <laughs> yeah, it it's almost a, makes you forget yeah. how annoying Meghan Markle well, is. Well, yes, yes. I put, can't. put Meghan Markle in a pencil skirt, and I will forget all about how annoying she is. Just, so, just so the question is, will Prince Harry survive Meghan no. Markle? Right? That's no. The, I heard that they're surviving for Meghan Markle. The that, documentary so, yeah, is on that's, its way. That's, that's how they're well going to finish the Netflix deal. That'll be the name of I his was book. rooting for her. Lord knows, I was rooting for her. I was like, <laughs> she's out here in the royal kingdom like i was so happy for her and then she just fumbled the whole bag by being annoying and whining see i never got why black people celebrated her so much though she like did you watch suits and think that she was black i never thought she was black Andrew i didn't really Tate watch made suits. a video where he was like i'm she's whiter than me yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's like he's like i'll let you come over and make chicken for me and i'll decide whether you're black yeah. or not yeah. like, it just it gives me kamala harris vibes like she yeah. wasn't oh. she didn't like recognize <laughs> Jump like, scare. like she didn't like even identify really as black when she was in California running for office because it was more advantageous for her to identify as Asian American and Indian. But then all of a sudden when she wanted to be the first black VP and remind everyone that she's an AKA, like that's when, you know, she wanted to be black. Meghan Markle was not black when she was in suits, but then when she was the first black royal, it was like a monetized, you know, monetizable thing for her. Which at is, least she never developed a black scent like Kamala does true. when she needs to be sister girl Kamala. I'm like, mm -hmm, you and know that channel. laugh it's and like, that relaxer. <laughs> oh my god. This, or the uh, or Aquafina when she does her when she raps. Like when, she raps. Oh, yeah. I've not seen uh, this. Oh, yeah, Aquafina raps in like, the Little Mermaid. In the Little Mermaid. 
Uh, no like, way. But she, yeah, she was a uh, she like they, like she gets like pushed because now she's an actress. Now mm-hmm. she's mostly known for her acting. Yeah. But every few movies that comes out, there has to be some like hit piece. So like uh, Aquafina's troubling past with her black scent. Because oh, the yeah. way she would rap would be like she just had a, a voice that she yeah. put on that was her her rap voice mm-hmm. and people will like every so often bring it up and then like it'll go away again after yeah. uh, after a while so yep uh, but yeah if you want to see a Polly Pocket movie I not my business but the, you know it's up to you guys you Justice go see for it. Cynthia yeah. from Rugrats that's the real doll <laughs> the ball headed doll I've seen a lot of people like posting memes they're like this is the one we need yeah yeah. yeah. Cynthia was the real deal. All right. Uh, Oh, and not only do we have an Andrew Tate topic later, apparently Andrew Tate has launched his own comic book series called Top G. Top G Breaking Illusions is the first issue of the series, and it's going to cost $100. (laughs) It's going to be a prestige package, apparently. Uh, Is now Um, really the moment for this? You know? Andrew is in his bag. He's <laughs> he's got to make his money, man. He's got lawyers' bills now. I'm here for it. I'm all for capitalism. He's like <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm more of a like I'm I'm more qu- questioning the artwork on the cover. If you look at it, it's not the greatest rendition of him. Yeah, that forehead's aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> like like and and he's look he looks not like mean, but he looks like mean and a little bit like intimidated at well, the that's, same time. That's his it's, goal. It's giving it's top G to though. Be. It definitely is giving top G. I feel like <laughs> just, you know? we'll have to we'll have to see if it does. I mean, Maybe I'll buy it. Oh no! The the no. back cover says, "In a world enslaved by the Matrix, Matrix, one man stands as a beacon of truth and liberation." <laughs> Liberation's a strong term to use for him. Yes, that's right. that, that that's giving shameless vibes personally <laughs> yeah. to to be able to phrase that given what you've been charged with. But you know. It is what it is. We'll see what happens. I, I, I actually think the the other, like, the, the thing is, like, for Andrew Tate to do something like this, it's almost like a distraction, right? Like, he can distract. Enough of these, like, puff piece type stories and you forget that there's very, very serious allegations against him. It's why he's so good at what he does. Like, the, I see a lot of videos that are getting reposted now, whether it's the guy who imitates being. Have you ever seen Bottom G? The guy who just no. dances like uh, Andrew Tate. And I swear, like, he likes that stuff because it kind of takes the serious edge off of what's being said about him, right? Oh. Like, a lot of people make comedy content about him. And certainly, I'm, I'm willing to make jokes at his expense. But what he's charged with is very, very serious stuff. So I feel like he actually benefits from, like, the, the media weighing down, de- like, giving you just a deluge of content about him because it distracts from the very, very serious allegations. I'm I mean, looking at the site right now and it says, uh, the attack against me is relentless. They don't want you to know the truth. They want you living in a mental cage chained by a weak mindset. I became the superhero of the youth by telling the truth and teaching young men to be strong. And now I'm being punished for it in real time. These stories reflect the harsh truths of the matrix and how I escaped it and what I predict they'll try next. He tries so hard to sound triumphant that sometimes he sounds like he has victim mindset. Yeah. Like, I understand, like, he really does have a lot of people trying to tear him down. Like, I still think it was ridiculous that they deplatformed him off of everything. But he needs to kind of stop with this, like, martyr of the people narrative because it's a little exhausting. Yeah. Well, I also think that he's he's just very, very media trained in how he speaks. And he's got a way of eloquently phrasing something that has nothing to do with what people are actually complaining about him. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, he's like, yeah, that, they're like, yeah, that's great and all. You taught a bunch of kids some good stuff. But what about the women that, like... We need to hear about the women that you're charged with taking the money from. That's what we need to know about. He's like, what about the women? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. And we'll, Haram. We'll get into that later. All right, guys. We got a very spicy topic to discuss because uh, Pearl, who mm-hmm. is being kind of uh, – she, she, it seems like she's on a very fast descent right now. Uh, she made a, a spicy tweet the other day about, about teenage girls that nobody liked and <laughs> she deleted, uh, and rightfully so. But she is then now she, getting uh, – did a song, an original from Pearl. A Pearl original. Yeah. Um, and it's called Why Can't We Talk About the Blank. So let's just watch the video. Okay. Let's, this is uh, some atomic cringe. I had to I had to actually like go through on the internet. I'm like, can we even like show this? But it's yeah. been reposted by a bunch of people, so like commentating on it. So I, I we should yeah. be we should be fine. Uh, but let's listen to Pearl sing, yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Why, why can't we talk about them without getting kicked off of YouTube? 
Now I'm not saying Hitler was a good guy. <laughs> but I kind of want to know why. Now there's all these conspiracy theories. <laughs> the more they talk, I think maybe they're right. But I can't even listen to the convo. I can't even have the conversation without getting canceled by the left and the right. Why can't we talk about the without getting kicked off of YouTube? Just <laughs> sends now shivers down his mic. I'm not trying to be rude. <laughs> What? Why can't we talk about the? She seems at certain points it feels like there's like somebody like making her do this off camera, <laughs> and, and then at the other times she's like she doesn't know what she's doing. She can't possibly know what she's doing. But how can you be that successful and not know what you're doing? Yeah. yeah so per, Piers Morgan. <laughs> Pierce Morgan did a segment with her grilling her on why she posted this and also why she deleted it immediately after. And uh, then he brought on a contributor who basically said that, you know, watching Pearl is like watching a train wreck. You can't look away, but she's going to fade into obscurity very soon. Um, and basically, she, she just said, you know, it's about cancel culture. It was I, nothing serious, you know, just trying to be tongue in cheek. And Piers Morgan just uh, tweeted at her and said this yesterday. Yeah. You did an incredibly stupid thing with your now deleted Hitler video. As I said to you after our interview, own your mistake and apologize for the offense you caused Jews or ignore my advice and be condemned as Kanye was for pulling similar anti-Semitic stunts. Your choice. Then she said, apologize to the woke mob or be deplatformed like Kanye. Is that a threat? Yeah, I mean, it actually does feel that way. And I, I think that for a guy who hosts a show it called looks Uncensored, he just feels like he's uh, like, he, he's like, yes, you can say whatever you want as long as it doesn't defend me. He's in, only in strengthening case, yeah. her like fan base to defend her when he's saying which, stuff like yeah. this. You shouldn't do, right? What you should do is point out like what you did was just stupid and, and it's just dumb, right? Why are you... Courting this just audience. treat her like a laughing stock, yes. not a threat. Don't yeah. legitimize it in any way, shape, or form. It's just it's shocking to me because he has a lot of people on where he talks about cancel culture and he talks about hate speech, mm. and and he's not willing to kind of uh, address the fact that he's engaging in the same thing here because this is something that bothers him. Uh, and people have a right to ask those questions. It's just that you're doing it with someone who's very clearly doing this for clout right now. Like she's posting all this stuff and taking it down. To me, it feels like someone who's just looking for engage engagement farming. Like a lot of it coinciding like with when Twitter got, oh sorry, X got monetized, <laughs> right? So they're looking for high engagement off of things that are absolutely ridiculous. Like I imagined everyone when Twitter got monetized was like, Get the hot takes ready, right? Yeah. So, so you say the stuff that's going to upset upset everyone. But I, I do find his take on this hypocritical. I, I do like I don't like what she said, and I think she's stupid for saying it. And I think she looks ridiculous in this video. But I think that his points are a little bit like he came off as like almost overwhelmingly self righteous and indignant in the video. Yeah, I don't know if you guys watched the the actual Piers yeah. Morgan segment, but he comes off in this like. A performatively indignant way that doesn't fit with how he acts the rest of the time when mm -hmm. it's a topic he agrees with, which isn't right. intellectually consistent. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So. He, he said that his show is going to uncancel the canceled and yeah. we're going to fight cancel culture yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And now he's talking like this, <laughs> like he's this self righteous, out of touch boomer. And uh, is it so, is it, can she sing? Do you think she can sing? The is the talent there? It wasn't horrendous. Yeah. Please be serious. <laughs> you are so unserious. She wrote, how are you off key on your own record? Like you made a song and you can't hit a single note on the song. Like, <laughs> I, like I think Pearl is funny, but please put the ukulele down. Like, yeah, yeah it's no. giving toxic gossip train vibes to she, me. What she'll do next is she'll sell it on iTunes and make like a ton of money because she'll she'll end up really really dumb like the the lady from or no we. <laughs> able to confirm that the 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 like uh colleen, colleen ballinger, ballinger miranda sings she you know i'm sure you saw the toxic yeah, gossip sings, train yeah. video supposedly there was, there was a rumor that she put it on itunes but we couldn't find it yeah. so i guess that was fake news yeah. yeah but yeah just like 
I'm like, no, like put put the ukulele down. Yeah. To to every white woman out there, like please. No more ukuleles. Stop doing this to yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I do think it was pretty hypocritical what Pierce was saying too, like being so aggressive about like wanting to censor her. But I am also getting so frustrated with this whole just romanticizing Hitler type yeah. of ordeal that I keep seeing from certain influencers. It's like very strange how this continues to keep coming back to fruition. Like it's, I feel like over a thousand years played out yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, obviously exaggerating there, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's strange. It's very strange behavior, and it's really hard for me to tell when Pearl is being serious and when she's like just Andrew trolling. Tate. Like, 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 like Andrew Tate, you never know when he's being like he can make decent points about certain topics, but then you don't know when you're getting serious topics or when he's talking about how Spider Man's a pussy. Like well, he's that's, clever about <laughs> yeah. it, though. Yes, no, he's yeah. he's infinitely better at it. Than yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think you know I agree. I think people need to find a better way to be edgy than just simply you know, romanticizing Hitler, uh, which has just been a recurring thing uh, these days. But, you know, I do agree and, and, I, and I support free speech. I think if I, and I believe that hate speech is free speech, but at the same time, I do believe that speech comes with consequences, obviously. And if, you know, people don't like what you say about Hitler, then they're free to react to you in the way that they, they want to. I think peers here, obviously, bro you host a show you know called uncensored and then you're gonna threaten censorship it's just that's silly i think that the response that she's getting is the right response if people disagree with her call her out if they don't then they don't you know just laugh at her look like you can't sing girl that's, that's just, like the, yeah. the best thing you can do is to not make a bigger deal out of it because then it ends up uh it's streisand effects and it ends up reaching more people yeah. when you're better off just ignoring it because it's very clearly like when the child is acting up in the corner trying to get yeah. your attention you ignore the child because they're pining for your attention that's what this felt like to me just like the tweet from the other day like it doesn't feel genuine to me it feels like something that you're mm -hmm. just doing because you're desperate to continue the engagement i can't say whether that's actually the fact or not i don't know her mm -hmm. but something like this like i think that Piers comes out like he didn't do himself he did like i didn't even like his his tone in the interview because he could have just let her speak mm -hmm. and you don't need to to interject in yeah. a condescending way because what she's saying is already stupid. Yeah. So like it's like he discredits his future work by taking such a hard stance on a censorship issue yeah. for something like this because yeah. he's not like he's not saying he's like oh it's not about censoring you but he's like labeling it a certain way right it's like yeah. it's dumb enough on its own the idea the stupidity of the idea the stupidity of the song the clearly attention seeking nature of the song can live and die on its own you don't need to add to yeah. it and tweets like this only embolden actual anti-semites yeah. because you know here she is saying in the video i can't talk about this i can't talk about that they're going to come for me and then you have Piers and he's morgan like, you can't talk about that then you can't talk about it so all these, shocking. right yeah. so all of these actual anti-semites <laughs> are going to be well look this is proof exactly. of this even though there is no this but you know that's well, what they're going to do it's like you and what army yeah. Yeah. Right, are yeah. going to go deplatform pearl well it was uh, the same thing that happened to kanye when he's like they're taking yeah. away my bank she accounts. was making a very like, obvious yeah. nod to the situation with yay and i think if there was any actual compassion toward kanye when he was going through that phase then they wouldn't have deplatformed him and depersoned him to the degree that he did because that just accelerates someone further down a path uh where they can't rehabilitate their image and anymore. it is true that free speech like you don't have free speech for speech you like you have it for the speech that offends you because that's the whole point of it otherwise you wouldn't need the rule you wouldn't need the the constitutional amendment if yeah. it was always stuff you agreed with so stuff like this we as adults would have to have a better way of handling it than mobilizing like the internet or like or him saying like they're going to come for you the way they came for kanye so yeah. you know what we need to do we need to show our 21 jump street yeah <laughs> yeah exactly we need to get a copy of 21 jump street it cured Kanye of his anti-Semitism, and, and I'm oh, sure I it can do the same for yeah. Pearl. But it was that new Jonah Hill movie that he had watched. What was what was that one called? It was with um, the the really bad oh, one. The yeah, yeah, you yeah. people, you people. I thought he said yeah. it was Twenty One Jump Street. It was, it was, yeah. 21. was it Twenty One Jump Street? You people is the one that he should apologize for because he did, they did the fake kiss. Uh, where they wouldn't, they, they CGI. Imagine your co star is just so repulsed by you that you have to CGI the kiss scene. <laughs> yeah, like, like I, oh, I think that they might have done that because of COVID. It could mm. have been because of COVID. Like, like, they're like, look, we're, 
Like we got Possibly. people not masked here. We are not letting you guys oh swap God. bodily fluids. That, that is just a lawsuit waiting to happen in Hollywood at that time. You guys are right. It was 21 Jump Street, yeah. and he did say that it made him like Jewish people again. That's <laughs> crazy. We, we do That's live well. in such a freaking. It's such a weird time to be alive. Thank it, you, Kanye. It, it, Very Earth cool. Earth is ghetto. I've been saying this. Earth is literally ghetto. Like humanity is a mess. Like they're talking about aliens are here now. Those aliens want nothing to do with us. If they came once, they didn't come back. For no. A yeah. What does it say about the aliens that they came to Earth and was like, damn. I'm good. Like, it's section eight as a country, go. right? Or like, a planet. No, you, I, I, when you were talking about the Carly Russell story, you had a really philosophical take. I didn't want to undermine it, but I, literally the only thing I can think of when I think of that story is ghetto. Like everything about this story <laughs> is ghetto. Like it is ghetto. snatched off your own weave and then ran into the forest, the forest in Alabama, <laughs> Hoover, Alabama. I've been there. Running into the forest in Hoover, Alabama with some Cheez-Its? Right. Yeah. Acting like Harriet Tubman, running to freedom. <laughs> like, right. be serious. Right. What right. kind of Cheez-Its? That's, that's the, that's the million-dollar question. Were they, like, I'm, I'm, I prefer the Parmesan. Probably white cheddar. You're asking the right question. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer the white cheddar. Also, they have puffy ones now that I'm a fan of. Oh. Yes. Yes, she should have gotten puffy those. Yeah, puffy Cheez-Its. And the thing is, she didn't even think this through. She left her phone in the car. She can't Uber Eats the forest. I don't even know what you put as your location. I would drop a pin for that. But the, the thing is, if she's taking these Cheez-Its, no good and well, how long is that bag of Cheez-Its going to last her? So that is why she actually showed up 12 hours later. She ran out of Cheez-Its. That's the real. Yeah. And I hope they were stale. No, no, ad <laughs> no address to have food delivered. That's a problem. In the, in the, in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, yeah. like, how do you get pizza delivered to turtles that live under the you know in the sewers yeah. it's, uh, the address is 122 and an 8 <laughs> oh, I just remember too let's not forget that wench had money in Witch. her sock <laughs> She, really? had, she no, had money from her son. She also Googled how to steal money from a cash register. So yeah. I'm pretty sure she robbed her own job allegedly. She robbed and her and she stole a, a bathrobe too. Ghetto. So ghetto. That's what? like Cardi B's the, impact. The, the epitome of ratchet. Wait, what is the point of the bathrobe? What's the point Warm of snatching off night. your own wig? Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I think that in this case, Pearl, you're, you're acting stupid. Piers, you're acting stupid. Everyone's acting stupid. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's other. the answer to this, right? Like, I, I think that because when you censor anything, even if it's anti-Semitic language or racist language or sexist language, it only emboldens the people that use that type of language. The, the, the remedy, the cure to bad ideas is good ideas. And I think that because we live in a free society just as pearl has the right to say these things as does every racist as does every sexist as does every one who has bad ideas we also have the right to say that those are bad ideas and and i think that our arguments should be strong enough to disprove their arguments and if they aren't then you know that's another conversation but the but censorship itself will never actually eradicate these ideas people are just going to talk about them uh in more shadowy places and they're going to be more emboldened to actually stand on what they believe in, and uh, yeah. So. And like you said, when you when you censor them, it just it reinforces the ideas that they already have that they're being persecuted. The Matrix. Yeah. It's the ma It's the Matrix. It's coming for Pearl right now. Here's Morgan That's uncensored. Is. is the Matrix. He's the Matrix. All right, <laughs> Taylor Swift set off a 2.3 magnitude Swift. <laughs> This woman is powerful. Swift she quake. should trademark that. She should trademark that term. T Swift quake during a concert in Seattle, says a seismologist. I'm telling you right now, it should say Swi uh, Swift quake, TM. Like can, you, can we just talk about the power of Taylor Swift here? Because even yes. Lizzo hasn't done that. <gasps> right? You would think with her dancing, I would be like... Wow. wow! So the power Mass of Taylor Swift. Event. <laughs> Even Lizzo playing the ukulele. The power has not of done a this. skinny blonde woman wow. knows no bounds. Wow. Right? She is the industry. Yeah, she is. <laughs> and I give her a lot of credit because I, I make fun of like Shawn Mendes for canceling concerts and Taylor Swift's like adding concerts every every day. She's like, I'll do three she's more. Going for like yeah. six hours at a time. Yeah, she's wow. uh, she's got to, she's got unbelievable stamina. To, to set off an earthquake. I have <laughs> such an unpopular opinion about her. I don't know why she gets so time. much hate for talking about her exes and her music. Would you rather she's talking about throwing her WAP around like Cardi B? Like she, especially when she was in her 20s. Like people always say, like, oh, it's the Taylor Swift effect. Like, yes, yeah, she writes her own music. She's talking about her love yeah. life. Like, why yeah. wouldn't she? I think maybe they'd like a little bit more introspection. Like, I think what annoys me is that like, maybe I every time yeah. the narrative is that you know, every one of her exes is an evil monster yeah. and all of her fans believe that, you know, she's never been in the wrong. Yeah. When do you not you're do the, the same? common denominator in all of your breakups. Yeah. Taylor's never woman, the have problem. Have you never done yeah. that? As a woman, do you ever say, like, looking back at your relationships, I was the toxic one. 
Well, I don't have any exes, so. Oh, oh valid, no. valid. No. What, what well, about I've you? never been toxic. I'm unproblematic. Yeah. I am a child of God sitting here Let's doing call a friend. Work. Let's call a friend about that. <laughs> no, don't call anybody. <laughs> we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to fact check that one. We're, right. we're, gonna, have to, we're gonna have to do our. We're gonna have to do our due diligence. We'll fact check that one to make sure that See, one's true. Yeah. That's already biased because fact checkers are my ops. Fact. <laughs> I'm just saying she might have shared some blame in her relationship yeah. with John Mayer. Yeah. I don't think that he's just a monster. He's like Mayer. she says, yeah. and like her fans believe, and they they don't, probably don't deserve to get harassed online by her fan base. I will say that one of the cringiest memes that came out of 2020 election was the people who there was a meme that says like uh, Taylor Swift makes 10,000 songs about picking the wrong guy, vote like votes for Joe Biden or endorses Joe Biden. It, just, yeah. it, just, it felt very try hard. Yeah, like like it didn't write like connect, but that meme was everywhere for yeah. a period of time. And I'm like, eh. Like, I get what they went for. Yeah, like, but I, it, it didn't work for me. I just don't believe in posting your L's, and I feel like her entire career is kind of defined by that. Like, if you mm. if you make a song about every failed relationship that you've been in, I eventually start wondering, why are you in so many failed relationships, right? That you have so much subject material. Um, I'm sure she's an absolutely insufferable person. To, to be, be in a relationship, a relationship I, yeah, imagine. Like, I, I can't imagine that it's a, it's a walk in the park, for sure. I <laughs> I would date her. She can write a whole album about me. There see, you see, you like that. You like that toxic, crazy girl vibe, right. though. Yeah, <laughs> what, it's like, on brand. Like, why? What brings you? What brings you there? Chaos. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> the man. meme is that like all Taylor Swift stands, their biggest trauma in life is their high school breakup. Yeah, and there's nothing real. more serious addressed in her music. But that's fine. <laughs> I mean, that's more of a commentary Whatever. on how good we have it here in America, right? Like, if your right. biggest complaint is, like, your your high school breakup, then your life has been pretty Just easy. don't Jonah though. Hill like, your ex. Yeah, yes. but, but I will say, I wish Taylor Swift was more popular in the hood because Taylor Swift has shown... <laughs> that you can have all these relationships and still not have a baby daddy. And I gotta say <laughs> that that is Ali. personally, inspira is should possible. be inspirational for a lot of people. Yes. Well, she does have street cred now. You know, she linked up with Ice Spice. That's oh. the hood's princess Diana. Miss Pearson, yeah. She, she, also, she did, they did Ice Pearson. <laughs> she did do that T-Pain video back in the day where she performed with T-Pain. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, she, long time ago. That was actually when I started to notice that the cultures were becoming unbelievably homogenized. And like, mm. these two, like, just like there's nothing worse than people like that like pretending like they're friends yeah. where I'm like dude you did that video and you left and you both walked in opposite directions <laughs> like you did not hang out like it's it's very cringy yeah. when they're like oh we were hanging out I'm like we linked up we linked up I'm like, no, like two producer your producer called his producer and you set a date and, and then a limo date. brought you each there well you that's maybe kind of said what 15. this show is like yes. yeah. you know Tim called Dennis Prager yes and set up a play date yeah. for all of us the lady is crazy. Is I know exactly CJ's like 16. They let but. the kids Okay. <laughs> they let the kids come out and play a yeah. little bit. But that's 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 what it feels like when these yeah. celebrities pretend to be like really, really yeah. good friends. I'm like, no, this is an advantageous business. Similar to what you were saying earlier about Ice Spice in, in Kim Kart in North. Like yeah. that doesn't happen unless there's a business reason for it. Yeah. Otherwise it's just an adult hanging out with a child. Yeah. That's well, weird. I'm convinced yeah. that Northwest is a genius. Cause that to me just seemed like a case study. Because mm -hmm. after Ice left, like all the pictures and videos was just North holding her bag with the wig on like she yeah. just wanted to observe this like halloween character in person and yeah. when you have the money to it's do like that it's like inviting a clown to your kid's birthday party it's the same thing Ooh. don't talk about his I wife can't like you that. Talk <laughs> like that mary but um hey i know that but what do you think about the morgan wallen and little dirt club in that actually you know? okay yeah I'm, i think I'm that's that I feels like kind of that. Like feels kind of yeah. natural and i feel like dirk was kind of vibing in nashville i don't know <laughs> well no he because like after remember because like like every time morgan wallen releases a new album they come out and they're like this is the guy who said the end where, and then like everybody has to you know they write their articles about it mm -hmm. and little Dirk's like bro that was like five years ago he apologized like what do you want him to do and yeah. like, meanwhile his album is the most popular yeah. of the year as it should be the uh and that's really funny too because there's another artist I, i've been listening to a lot of an artist named rod wave who's uh like i love rod wave. yeah he's great yeah. right and they're like he has a bunch of like produced collabs with morgan wallen that are not oh, i don't great. they're not official they're like yeah. they're done by uh, like alt producers okay but they sound great right yeah. like and, and they always do like the really great fro photoshop work where it looks like they're hanging out see yeah. i want to delude myself into believing that they're hanging out together yeah. they're not but it would be cool if they were yeah because rod wave is dope and yeah. so that would that would be cool yeah. but it's but like i said when taylor swift who's like if she's not working she's losing money right so mm. it's like she didn't just uh -huh, i'm gonna go hang out with this person for really it's not yeah. just some cutesy thing that happens you're 
every day. Like, what is it? like Mariah Carey said once, she said like she can't leave, like it costs $50,000 a day just to leave the house or something like that because between pr private security uh, and meetings, like you have, there, there's no reason to leave your house unless it's for something that's going to make you more than that because yeah. to just go out and get groceries will cost you this much money mm -hmm. because of who you are. Yeah. So like Taylor Swift isn't just happening upon uh, somebody and saying, oh, let's film this cute TikTok together. No, your life costs a and she she doesn't just happen upon a guy that she wants to date and like has yeah. a normal relationship that doesn't somehow factor into her business model. Exactly. Yeah. Like when you're when you're a celebrity of that level of fame, every choice has to be monetized or at least considered to what it's going to cost you as a, as a celebrity. Well, Jay Z and Beyonce are perfect examples of that. Jay Z cheated on Beyonce, and they made three albums about it. Perfect. And monetize it's a billionaire. Monetize it, right? <laughs> I was. I, that's also another one of the worst memes. It's like. Uh, it shows a picture of Jay-Z and Beyonce like on the beach mm. and Jay like they got Jay-Z at like the worst time. It's just the worst Jay-Z photo you've ever seen. Is it him in the white t-shirt or? I think he's shirtless in the photo. Okay. And, like, he's like but leaning it, back. He's like, and he's making a face. It's just like they did him dirty by this yeah. photo. And they basically, it says like, if, J if, if Jay-Z can, if a guy can pull, if this guy can pull Beyonce, shoot your shot, Kings. I'm like, he's a billionaire. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. could look like a, he could look like nothing. He could look like goop and he could and he could pull speaking uh, of goop <laughs> <laughs> and, and the words of jay-z himself there's no such thing as an ugly billionaire i'm cute <laughs> that was my favorite lyric as kodak black says money makes you handsome yeah, okay it's true like, like uh, it's just it's just that that was a very disingenuous statement i'm like dude he's worth like a billion dollars it does not matter what he looks like but with ariana yeah. grande's new boyfriend that i really don't understand yeah. traumatic there, uh, there's gonna, that's gonna be something that's studied for her net for worth years. is how many times more than his and he also played spongebob the <laughs> on musical Broadway. <laughs> Wait, on what? Broadway, the guy she's cheating on her uh, the, like, the, what the, the hell are you doing? The guy she's with looks like he looks like ugly Tom Holland with yeah, Mark Zuckerberg's yeah. eyes. Um, with Mark oh Zuckerberg. yeah, he looks like, like the love child hair. of Tom Holland and Mark Zuckerberg. Yes, That's does. exactly what he looks yeah. like. Oh so he uh, like, and like, he just left his wife and baby to be in a two month fling with Ariana Grande. Yeah. And she'll leave. And him, what does uh, she get out of that? I don't understand. Uh, it's just the just, sick thrill of breaking up a family. I think Wicked is overseas, so maybe like she's she, maybe she just can't sleep alone at night. Maybe she's just, she even has a song though called "Break Up with Your Girlfriend." I'm bored. Yeah, but not divorce your wife. I'm bored. Uh, yeah, her next album's coming. Not abandon your child. I'm bored. Please. Something tells me those boundaries are lost on her. Just just <laughs> see, just, just say. See, y'all are attacking Ariana and not recognizing the fact that she is one of the best philanthropists that we know of. First Pete Davidson, now this Ethan Slater guy. <laughs> She just loves charity, obviously, okay. and I, and, I, and I hope to be a beneficiary one I day. I so. accept the charity. That's my future ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's let's actually just move on. Let's talk about Megan Fox because this is a this is a really funny story. Mary, do you want to tell everybody what happened? Yeah. We covered it a little bit, but she she advertised. She's clapped a back at her haters. Yes. So Megan Fox posted a GoFundMe for her nail tech's dad's medical funds and appeared to not have donated anything herself. She just wanted her fans to donate small amounts of money. And everyone was saying she's a hypocrite for this and she should have just paid for it in full because obviously it's like nothing to her to pay like what, 30,000 for a medical bill. It would not even leave a dent in her bank account. But she decided to clap back at these haters. So here's what her Instagram story said. Hey weirdos, do any of you have the emotional intelligence to consider that maybe Brit doesn't want her celebrity clients donating large sums of money to her because it creates a dynamic in her working relationships that makes her uncomfortable? So instead, she asked me to post the GoFundMe so that many people could donate small amounts of money to help them reach their goal. I just obliged her request. Anything she needs from me personally, she'll ask and I'll do it privately. One thing you're not going to accuse me of is being miserly or lacking generosity. So try again on another day, probably tomorrow, with some different bullshit, you bunch of psychos. That word of the day that she threw in there was fantastic. That miserly, yeah. yeah. She's, she's, Megan Fox is yeah. just, she you, loves pulling out the SAT words because she say, hates being perceived SAT. as a bimbo. You know when she typed that, she's like, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I don't agree with her entire approach, but parts of what she said is correct. I'm pro her in this. I, I'm on her side because first of all, 
I hate this notion that celebrities or just wealthy people in general are obligated to pay the expenses of their friends or family members. That's very strange to me. Like you can't just go spending money out of her bag. And if you did bag. that for everyone, you couldn't do it for anyone anymore. Exactly. So. But how I think if, if she really wanted to approach this, because I do believe the situation. I do believe that her nail tech probably asked her to post the GoFundMe. But if she wanted to be more private because she should have known that this backlash was potential, maybe have like a, a small intimate event where it's yeah. like... Um, what's the word for it? Uh, when like someone has cancer and you're, like you're bringing them all like a, there's like a word a for it. Benefit. Like a, it's thing. like a particular type of party where you're trying to raise money because someone is ill. I forgot what the term is for it, but she could have had one of those type of events where people came, you know, left envelopes anonymously. Like that's a way she could have approached. That's more it. effort than just posting something on your Instagram yeah. story, though. Which is so. fair. I 100% <laughs> agree with that. I'm I'm just saying like maybe playing devil's advocate, but I'm I'm on her side. But people, people do to love to tell the wealthy How what they should be money. doing with their money. They do this yeah. to Mr. Beast all the time. I will I will say like if I was for PR person because like something like this you actually probably should run it by your PR person mm -hmm. like if, if you're making a post like this the the explanation I would have given is like look I would have posted the the link and said like my tech asked me like said like refused a do refused me giving her a big donation and, at, and simply asked me to post this link and but I then would have given a small donation anyways and said but I did donate a small amount and would hope that you guys would join in Mm -hmm. Like that way you come off as like, look, uh, I, I refuse, like she, she refused my, my generous offer, but I went through and gave a small offer. Anyways, would you like to please also help? I feel like that would be a, a good way to kind of head off a little bit of the pushback at the pass. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I mean, it, like you're at the end of the day, you're right. Like they're, you're net, she's in a no win situation in yeah. this because they're going to tell you, why didn't you just cover the whole thing? Yes! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Slip, baby. Thank you. Thank you, Beanbag Actual. That was a. Uh, I, I specifically went to the chat and I said, "Can we get a crisis party for Xavier and CJ and Beanbag Actual right there without even uh, without even a message? No message. Thank well, you. Thank you for the big super chat." Whoa. But yeah, like she's she's in a no-win situation there, right? Because I think even if she did make a small donation, you would have these same people tweeting about why this, being like, why not more, you know, and, and, and comparing her donation to her net worth or her supposed net worth because people for some odd reason think that you can Google people's net worth and they'd be accurate numbers. Um, never accurate. Right, not, not never from accurate. Any per, not from any person that I've ever met that has a, a big enough profile where they have a net worth yeah. that you can supposedly find out. Every single person I've asked that question to is just like, no, those things are, those things are BS. Yeah. yeah. Mine like, like says it's like a million and a half, two million dollars. I'm like, where is this? <laughs> can I can, can I get that, please? Yeah, I was like, like do y'all need my account and routing number? Happy to provide. Bro. Maybe it's in shekel. It, maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it's some, some Japanese yen. I don't know. There you but. go. You know what's worse in the Megan situation, though? Because like at the end of the day, there is a win here. It's like there's money being raised for her friend that is sick. So I can mm. appreciate that. But then there was Sky Jackson a couple weeks ago who was getting dragged oh, on Black yeah. Twitter. Oh, yeah. We were talking about, about that? this. Oh, yeah. did? We brought it up. Like, yeah. uh, because she's like, I don't need the money. <laughs> She's like, I'm yeah. just having a raffle. Like, people have raffles all the time. <laughs> She's yeah. like, did you guys a ever go to school? raffle of all things, right? Yeah, did yeah. you ever go to school? We did this all the time. Go ahead, right. go, go ahead and explain <laughs> to the people watching to the people watching who, what that was. She went on TikTok this. Live, right? And mm. she's asking for $5 donations toward a raffle of a MacBook. And she, it, it's kind of weird because you don't know where the money is going. Yeah. And any extra money beyond the cost of the MacBook, she just said, "Oh, I'm going to use it on another raffle." But like, you don't really know. A where. raffle to the store for myself. I don't know. Yeah. Everyone was just saying, like, "Someone please book this girl. Like, she's clearly out of work, <laughs> <laughs> and she hasn't really been in much lately. So maybe they're right." I don't know. This is so terrible. But I saw again on Black Twitter. If you don't know Black Twitter, just Urban Dictionary. It's black. It's Black X now because it's not Twitter anymore. Oh yeah, Black, yeah. black yeah. X. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Which sounds even dirtier. Yes. Yeah. Um, I saw this That does video. sound very bad. Yeah. Oh my Elon God. wasn't thinking about like, that. Yeah. Yes, he was. Don't go to blackx.com. I guarantee you it's Please. not a good website. Well, it's, if you go to X, like the handle X on yeah. Twitter now, or on, on X, it's like the header is an X, the profile picture is an X, and then the ad is an X. There's three Xs there. He knew exactly what he was doing. Oh, yeah. Doing. He's a meme lord. He's doing it on yeah. purpose. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so what were they saying? This is terrible, but I saw this video that went viral of Sky Jackson trying to audition to be 
in some movie and it was like so no she was cringe. auditioning to be in the gossip girl remake and yes. i saw it too and it was so bad <laughs> gotta, she, 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 she can't get beyond the disney channel acting where she yeah. thinks there's a laugh track coming <laughs> yeah we got a 20 dollars super chat there from olivia claire Happy Friday, friends. I absolutely love the energy CJ and Xavier today. They seem fun to hang out with. Mary, you look beautiful as always. Thanks. Brett Thank is you, killing love. it too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Uh, yeah, that was like, I always feel bad for those. Like those auditions always look uncomfortable. Like that's like when yeah. people say acting's easy, I'm like, go watch an audition where there's no, where there's no music yeah. behind it, where there aren't other actors. It's a very difficult thing to do well. Yeah. Yeah. Acting I, is not easy. When I saw that video, I literally paused it line for line and tried to do the lines myself. <laughs> <laughs> Because so I was like, I swear I can act better than this. It's so bad. The, the thing about acting, acting is, it's like a lot of other things, right? It's like, when it's good, you don't notice it. When yeah. it's bad, you always yeah. notice yeah. it, right? Like, <laughs> oof. Not, I was physically good. ill watching that video, and someone in the retweet quote said, this video was the 9-11 of her career. I was like, that is so... Never oh forget. Hashtag God. never forget. I was yeah. flabbergasted. Well, that's the first I had heard of her in so long, and I was... And, and I see her TikToks pop up. She'll do little dancing videos and stuff like that, but, like, why don't you just DM Fashion Nova for, like, a little deal? Like, right. I feel like that would have... Like, yeah. where's her team at on this? Like, it's just... Uh, that's just... Uh, all right, guys, uh, let's get started then, shall we? What would we like? Would we like to see cute of the day or would we like to see cringe of the day? Let's start with yeah. cute and then go to cringe. Okay, all right, we will do that first then. All right, uh, cute of the day first. We have, this is from, hold on, let me put it on screen there. All right. Also, this if is you didn't from, know, this is PCC Pets. Yes, we uh, we, we have yeah. people who view the show. They People mm. love to show off their pets. Everyone yeah. does. Uh, anybody who has it. an Instagram knows that if you have pets, you love to share your pets. Uh, this is from Nami on Twitter. Says Brett uh, at Brett Dasovic, hashtag PCC Pets. This is my precious boy. I cannot pronounce it. But he says Orvail. If you don't feel like tackling the pronunciation, I'm not going to attempt it because it feels like a trap. Um, uh, it says who sadly passed earlier this Aww. year, uh, earlier this summer. We didn't always get along as well as we should, but he was a great boy. And whenever and wherever he is now, he is in a better place for it. So that is an a, a, was an adorable pooch. Well, R.I.P. We get so many posts from people who have lost their pets it almost like yeah. ruins cute of the day vibes yeah. a little bit a little but bit. like cute dog <laughs> all right uh this one here is from aldo the uh, aldo t-bear he he said because i missed this the other he says double check that list as my boys have missed the cut uh Aww. here it is this is ludo <laughs> and uh dexter oh cute cat that is adorable they Adorable. look gigantic. Yeah, it? that's like is that a, is that a small is house or a huge cat? Oh, like I, a bob cat. I don't know. Uh, so those are those are it's very very line. cute. And we got one more here from from Dead Man. He says found three years ago on Facebook. The tongue is a, adorable. Wait, I thought we already covered cat. this one. Uh, could have been. Uh, did we show this one yesterday? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 sometimes they all run together, but we've had a couple that have the the cat with the tongue that just kind of sticks out like that. We got very, a cross-eyed cat in the submissions too. Yep. I was obsessed. All right. The record, we, CJ swears I'm as dark as that cat. I just want people to know about his colorism. <laughs> Turn the lights off, guys. That is... <laughs> <laughs> Like, um, I I'm, say I'm nothing. saying nothing. I'm gonna... I would very much like to be excluded. I know from how this, this story. I know how this story goes, and if I say anything, it doesn't end well for me, no matter what you say. Your bills so, will be affected. Yes. yes. We'll, we'll, we'll ask Pearl. Yes. Then, yeah, then, Pearl. What do you think? She would have strong opinions. She would have very strong. Hopefully opinions. Hopefully a song black friends. to black. How black am I, Pearl? <laughs> She'll write a song about Okay, it. now we have cringe. All right, what, would, what, what, what do you think first, Mary? Do we want... I think we need to start with <laughs> Make sure I see Lizzo. This. Okay, all right, here we go, guys. Lizzo um, went to Middle Earth. She did. Here's Lizzo. No Lizzo plays Lord of the Rings theme song with a recorder in an elf costume as she visits Habadon in, uh, in New Zealand. Lizzo lass in her natural habitat. <laughs> Yeah. Live your best life, Queen. I say. She. It was a nice little recorder song. Do you have the the Instagram? I I have the the Insta. No, I I don't have the Instagram. It's Lizzo be eating. If you wanna. <laughs> that she. That does is, that is, that is. Oh yeah. no! Here we've got. It, it does play here. Never mind. Hold on. Oh okay. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's a vibe. She's gonna be in Rings of Power season two. Oh, I guarantee it. It's not super cringy. It's just kind of like I just feel like everything Lizzo does is cringe. Yeah. You know. At least she's dressed for once. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't understand this outfit. 
Wait, is her actual at Lizzo be eating? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna ask for some clarity on okay. that. Like, it's like the Fat Amy jokes. Call yourself Fat Amy so other people don't. She got the ears on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cosplayers will never recover from no, this. No, they will not. All right. Uh, but that, if you think that was cringe, we've got true cringe today, ladies and gentlemen. This is worse. Man who spent $15,000 on a realistic collie costume greets other dogs, strangers, and strangers on walk. Like, is this, this a furry or is this some other new thing? This man should be on a list. This is, uh, so let's watch <laughs> the video here. Ollie, Ollie London played this. It's, it's five minutes long. We're not going to watch the whole thing. But here, I'll, I'll play this for you guys. Oh, that better not be copyrighted. I'm not, I'm not getting copyrighted here. Let's go. He's like, the other dogs are so excited. <laughs> and this is in Japan, right? Yes. This is why I'm judgmental. <laughs> Why? Why? Just, you can't tell me that this isn't a fetish. This though. is exactly why the aliens came here and packed their bags and, like, and went back here. home. We're out of here. I'm taking off my glasses because I've seen enough. They were like, back would, to Neptune. I would kick it. <laughs> Put it down. I would lie and say he bit me. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, oh know. my god, the dog's so happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's also kind of scared. He's like, I'm telling you right now, well, do you think that dog is not <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> if dogs had their own Twitter, that would be on dog no, Twitter right would now. Be on dog Twitter. <laughs> be on dog Twitter right now. Oh my God. Like, like, if you have you ever seen those videos of like the humans who dress oh, up in the humans who dress up in like lion costumes and then go like hang out with lions? No. And it's like it's always the videos that are like why do men why women live longer than men? Yeah, yeah. I just wow. that is just like like it's it's, unca it's uncanny valley. The dog's like I know something's wrong with this, but I don't know what it is. This is dramatic yeah. to watch. Very <laughs> is done. <laughs> Just imagine one paw up, one paw down. <laughs> okay, so there, Ooh. there you go, guys. I need to pull it together. <laughs> um. It's uh, it's it's it's, 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 it's beyond other kin. It's beyond uh, it's beyond brony. It is uh, it's a whole new thing. You killed me. Yeah, they're saying <laughs> that in the chat. They're saying Mary's there. broken. We need to reboot her. So anyway, <laughs> trafficking women. Yeah. Um, uh, no. <laughs> Switching gears. <laughs> yes. All right. All right, guys. Actually, let's like, now that we've officially Ooh, broken Mary. I don't know Mary, if I can recover from that. <laughs> Sorry. You good? Yeah. You good? Okay. Mm -hmm. She's good. That's All a right. highlight reel. <laughs> let, 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 Some money is sending me. <laughs> There's just so much going on. It's it's it requires a lot of multitasking. Ooh. Oh my god. Ooh. You good? I'm I'm She's in tears. Cool. She's good. <sighs> Okay. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you guys like what you. I feel what, like I shouldn't be laughing when I start a topic that's talking about human trafficking. Well, no, we're not, we're not doing that yet. I want to talk to these guys. I want to talk okay, to these okay. guys about yes. what they've been doing lately. Yeah. Because uh, like uh, I asked yours, like what were the big stories that have kind of been going on that you guys have been following? Because that's kind of your job, right? Yeah. Is to pay attention to the news and pay attention to what's going on. What has been the story for each of you that has been the biggest thing that you've been following lately? Yeah, so it's, it, it, you know, in the last week, it's been two. I, I think the release of, you know, Trying in a Small Town has been a, a, a really big dominating theme. And I think it's been great to see it, you know, go so high up the charts because, you know, I, I listened to the, to the song and I was confused because all these white liberals were telling me it was racist. And I was like, wait, he didn't mention black people. So, like, why are you instinctively thinking about black people when you listen to his song about criminals? And I think that says a lot more about them than it does Jason Aldean. And so I think to see cancel culture kind of have the opposite effect uh, as we've seen it just blow blow up has been incredible. Um, I've also been at war with a, a, a rapper named Sexy Red. If you guys don't know who that is, your life is better because of it. But she is known for the hit song Pound Town and it sounds exactly like it does. Um, it is exactly how it sounds. And she, she raps in that song about how her quote, this is a quote, not me. Uh, she says <laughs> yeah. her coochie is pink 
and her booty hole is brown and how she needs to go to Miami <laughs> so she can find the sugar daddies. And then she goes on to say that her son needs a new pappy. <laughs> Again, her words, not mine. And so, um, you know, I tweeted at her and I said, you know, why are you always, you know, rapping about your vagina? Have you ever tried to say anything impactful? And, you know, she clapped back. And then, you know, one of her one of her stands said, you know, CJ, what have you ever done for the black community? And so I responded because, you know, a few summers ago when, you know, Black Lives Matter was burning down, um, you know, all of America, they also inadvertently burnt down lots of black owned businesses, oh, yeah. especially in the city of Atlanta. And so I was... I think 18 years old at the time. And so I started to go fund me basically with the opposite intention. I wanted to help reopen the black owned businesses that these terrorists had, you know, burnt down and all of the racist conservatives in America donated to that GoFundMe, and we raised $170,000 to open those black owned businesses. And so I replied with that, that's what I've done for the black community. And they were like, oh, well, you kind of ate with that, but um, you know, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll leave that alone. So it's been good. I, I'm waging a war on Pound Town. I'm going to bring God <laughs> to Pound Town. I am bringing the Bible to Pound Town, you know, and, and I'm uniquely qualified. I was just at the Holy Land. I was in Jerusalem a few weeks ago. Oh, By the time I am done, with Pound Town. It will be the new Jerusalem. <laughs> ah, so. okay, okay. So, so are we gonna put an embassy in Pound Town? There, there may need to be. We may, so we're, may not, be. we're not turning Pound Town into glass. We're not going to Sodom and Gomorrah no. Pound Town. You, you know, I think- It can be reformed. I, I think it can be reformed. I think, I think Sexy Red will be excommunicated. She will not be, <laughs> it, it will no longer even be named Pound Town. It will be, it will, it, it, we're gonna rebrand. What do we call it, what do we call it then? Redemption Town. Ah, okay. The sanctuary of Pound. There you go. There the you what go. of the Pound? The Sanctuary of Pound. <laughs> 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 this show is off to a great start. Uh, well, you know, like, who needs anything to be on the rails? It's off the rails. It's off the rails is fine. That, right. that, that's yeah. fine. Uh, is this the type of thing with the... Is, has there been another example in country music lately that you've seen in this? Because this is the most recent example like can you think mm. of another one that's that's gone on or any like within music uh anything that's been controversial of them honestly i know there's like the doja cat thing that we'll yeah. talk about a little bit later and people accusing her of black fishing and and all of that stuff but i think probably the most controversial thing was probably like the Lil dirk morgan wallen collab yeah. because there are a lot of people who you know aren't ready to move on from from that incident and obviously little dirk you know, if I say, Wait. if I say Morgan Wallen, you know, you know, we should move on. I'm an Uncle Tom. I'm a sellout. But, you know, Lil Durk, who is a part of a criminal syndicate in the <laughs> Chicago, how are you going to call him a sellout or Uncle Tom? It doesn't really work. You know so. what's so sick is people have told me I look like Lil Durk. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get on Google. Do you see it? <laughs> Wait. Who is <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you do. Who is who is okay. you do see it? If I squint, wait, hold up. Let me get a picture. You could be out. like third cousin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't think you look like him. I don't think you you're look lying. Like him. I don't think you look like him. You're I don't lying. Think, I don't think you look like him. I don't think you look like him. Not if you at all. squint, if you squint, if you squint, you know. So and then I'm, look back I'm and the forth. girl from the ring mixed with little Dirk. <laughs> yeah. Do but you, you took do, after do you your rap? Light skin mother? <laughs> I don't rap. You don't no, rap? Have, have you ever tried? Of my, no, no. Genetically, it could, it could be, be a skill that you could be. adopt. Yeah, yeah. He might. I might see him at the family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> I am done. The next time, yeah, but the, the great thing for you is the next time someone demands reparations from you, you say, my cousin's a little dark. Right. <laughs> yeah. As long as you have a dose of chocolate in you. <laughs> you know, they used to say uh, <laughs> so, somebody said we need to put a new poll up. I'm not putting that poll up, ladies and gentlemen. Mary does not look like Lil Dirk. Please don't. I'm not, don't do I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> There's okay, a case so I, I also want to point out, though, like if they forget, do you remember when like Tim McGraw and Nelly did this? Well, I mean, like literally, mm -hmm. like I, I always forget that I'm older than everyone here. I, I'm like way older than everyone here. But Nelly and Tim McGraw did a song back mm -hmm. in like 2000 something. Mm -hmm. That was a very long time ago. Yeah. Uh, like uh, when people make the comments that we were more united as a country back then, they're mm -hmm. probably right in, yeah. in some fashion. Yeah, right? I will die on this hill because I believe it so firmly. But maturity as a black person is admitting that you like country music. 
<laughs> no, country music I, slaps, bro. Like I'm from Georgia, so like I'm already indoctrinated with it, and I went to school at the University of Alabama, Roll Tide. So obviously grew up a lot around country music, but yeah, it, it slaps. Like I like it. There's a dude named Rashad who does like country covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that dude. Like, he did ballin'. Yep. It, yeah. It's he's got a couple that are really, really good. Like yeah. it's like it's half satire, half real, but then he's yeah. got his own real music as well. Like he's good. Yeah. He's, he's good. You know, I thought about your question a, a little bit more. I think it actually is a little bit alarming that we haven't had more country songs offending people because maybe that's a sign that country now. music has lost its way yeah. because it used yeah. to everything that Jason Aldean was talking about in that song, try that in a small town mm -hmm. it, it is, was about American values, not allowing uh, one lyric is about not carjacking a grandma at a red light. What's objectionable about that. But now we even have, this new generation of country music stars like Kelsey Ballerini and all these people who are more obsessed Rainbow with being is. woke and, you know, injecting rainbow and, into country music than actually talking about farms and corn and tractors. And I just think that it, it's weird because if country music loses its way, there's really not a genre of music that really gives way to that Americano, um, you know, kind of yeah. Era. No, we, we've mm -hmm. we've talked about the mainly in regards to Marin Morris. That that was Marin Morris, to me. Kelsey Ballerini, Casey Musgraves is also like kind of trying to infect country music with wokeness. Yeah, who's and the guy who sings with his wife? I always forget that guy's name. Uh, uh, not sure. Dan and Shay. No, no, I can't, I can't remember. But there's like, like in a lot of ways, I think you're right. Like right for for a lot of this stuff, it's like. Music, you used to be able to sector off into genres, mm -hmm. and it was okay that you appealed to different groups of people. Yeah. Like, it's actually one of the interesting things. When I talk about, like, loving rap music growing up, the fact, like, it crossed cultural boundaries mm -hmm. because it was marketed to everyone, but not everyone had to like it. Mm -hmm. You were allowed to figure out what you wanted to like, and, and then you could, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Eminem comes onto the scene, and that further cements, like, uh, uh, white middle America mm -hmm. learning to really love rap music because they had... Somebody points out there, like, you know why America was so united back then because the best golfer was black and the best rapper was white. Maybe and representation people, does matter. Yeah, well, I'm saying, like, but, but I'm saying that like, you know, having those, whether it's about the values or just the fact that you like that style of music, yeah. it didn't matter that it was different from your life experience. It was allowed to speak to you. Now everything is so homogenized. You don't get a chance to have music that speaks to a unique set of interests because it's all boiled down to some amorphous Borg of just g generic pop. Yeah. Yeah. Like even a lot of the country music, like Sam Hunt is basically just pop yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's pop music with a country tinge to it. Yeah. And it, in, but the, like he still would speak about for the most part country themes, mm -hmm. but it's like, it feels like most music is starting to homogenize down and all become one thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how it feels when country artists are doing all of these collabs with rap artists and pop artists. Cause it does dilute the genre. Mm -hmm. Yeah to a degree but like yeah. it's good that they can still they have to do like a Venn diagram their, like what do we have in common they can yeah. look past about? the differences between yeah. their fan bases yeah. that's yeah. the important thing everything's so commercialized and it's exactly. a by it's a byproduct of that so it's <laughs> like you're trying to speak to the largest audience of people which really loses like the core of what country music is it's supposed to be relatable to people who work hard love america love their farm love their girl love their gun and love a cold beer uh and i think that like there's only a few people who are still true that uh, my friend um kylan she loves zach bryan and because he's like very folksy very like he hates being famous and so he just kind of just talks about his life and growing up in a in a small town um as cliche as that has become now um but yeah so i think the commercialization of music has been so bad but it's also had such a terrible impact on the rap industry because now you have songs like pound town and suki who you've been you don't with. have to go off on suki suki who, tell who us is about suki? this who is suki so <laughs> suki yana the goat as she goes by is actually a very close friend of <laughs> sexy red from pound town mm. and they're all connected birds of a feather it's like a mafia yeah it's like a swarm of roaches, as I, what I would say. <laughs> but uh, Sukiyana, so I recently went viral because I just went off on Sukiyana because she was standing in front of uh, oh, I just Buckingham Palace over in London. And as she's walking by these people who are minding their business on this nice sunny day, she decides to scream out, I'm trying to get my coochie scratched and eat her man's behind. And she's just like, wait, screaming. I didn't see that part. What? Oh, you didn't see that? I just saw the coochie scratch part. Yeah. Which then I was like that she should look 
look th- look into this, like WebMD. <laughs> like, I was concerned. Yeah, it's so like real. when Ben Shapiro said, you know, if you need a bucket and a mop, you might have a medical condition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Consult your doctor. Like, <laughs> Consult your doctor. Not the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so See. what happened with this this feud? So, well, we had a feud in the shade room a while ago, but that's a whole other story. But, <laughs> um, but recently, so I saw that video, and at first I wasn't even going to comment on it because it was just the most ghetto thing I've ever seen. But then I was like, you know what, let me put in my two cents because here's the thing that nobody wants to admit. The reason that so many stereotypes exist, particularly around black culture, is because people keep behaving like the worst sides of those stereotypes. And I said on the video, I'm like, there are black women fighting for their lives to be disassociated from these stereotypes that black women are trashy and ghetto and vulgar. But then you have Sukiyana the goat who wants to be as out loud and ratchet as she possibly could be. She is in front of these people who are minding their business. These people over in London, maybe they haven't seen that many black women in their lives. But you know which black women they can for sure say that they remember for the rest of their life? The women who are talking about getting their coochie scratch mm. and eating men's behind. That is disgusting. You know, it's similar that, you know, on Pearl's Sister. show, the pregame, she mostly invites black women as her guests. Like her panel is usually majority black, if not all black women, mm-hmm. which is weird because I think that like if you look at the demographics of the UK, black people make up like what, 3%? of the total population so it seems like she's going out of her way to search for these people and obviously since they're on her show they they are trashy like loose women and it just seems like a way to go out of uh, like to make your content to humiliate them and i mean they're they are going on there voluntarily they know what it is yeah. but still it's just it's very weird loose was such a poetic way yeah. To put that loose, I'm gonna start. I mean, there are words we can't say on YouTube, so I have to be careful. I have to be tactful. No, that's so accurate. I've been saying that actually for a while. That it annoys me when I see people go out of their way to go get the most ratchet, degenerate black person they possibly can, and then ask them an intellectual conversation. It happens it's, on Fresh and Fit too. Yeah, like sometimes it's funny, but other times it's just like we know that you went out of your way to do this. Um, so I do find that cringe, but be, people yeah. like Suki make it so much easier to find the most ratchet yeah. people you possibly can. But do you know what's crazy, too, is that all these corporations that are so obsessed with being woke, as a part of that, they, they, they commit to so-called social responsibility. How is it socially responsible to invest all of these these this money into the careers of people like Suki, the careers of people like Sexy Red, and have an entire generation of young black girls growing up um, having them as their role models. A woman who's rapping about her coochie, being pink, and the other one saying that she has some type of condition, right? And like that is, for all these companies that are, are so obsessed about elevating black women, elevating the black community, how does this elevate the black community in any way whatsoever? It doesn't. It, it, it destroys them from within. And I don't even think it's conspiracy anymore. It seems very intentional. Yeah, the rap industry has been tearing down the black community for a very long time at this point. It's actually embarrassing to see just like how the bar is in hell, especially when it comes to female rap, when you have the likes of her, you have Sexy Red, and just the culture that this is creating. Like there was another video that just went viral recently of these black women twerking at brunch and tire coochie out as they're sitting here twerking for some kind of competition. They probably want a bottle of Hennessy. It's like, why is this the culture? Why does it seem like there's such a constructed effort to make black people continuously become more and more ghetto? But then at the same time, we're supposed to have this victim mentality of like, oh no, like why are these people stereotyping us? Why are you being the stereotype? Don't duck if it doesn't apply. Yeah, that dog it, will holler. It's funny too because I grew up loving Jean Grey and the Fugees, and, mm-hmm. and so much of it is like, uh, like I, I guess, but it also maybe it's like, hey, hey there, fellow kids. I just can't relate because it's just I, yeah. I aged out of that genre, like that aspect of rap music, where it's like a lot of the stuff that I grew up. Oh, by the way, the artist I was thinking of it was Kane Brown. That's okay, what yeah. I was, I was mm, thinking of earlier. Yeah. I couldn't think of his name off the top of my head, but like I loved a lot of that. Missy Elliott, growing up, right? Like mm-hmm. it was, it was just a different time when you're younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, like I come from, I came from a family where. I listen to a lot like my my brother I can kind of almost exclusively attribute to the fact that I listen to every genre of music Mm -hmm. because whether I was listening to live or Smashing Pumpkins uh, Bone Thugs Tupac uh, or even uh, Garth like he liked Garth Brooks Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Diamond Rio like country artists right from that time period that uh, like I listened to every genre of music but they were all vastly different genres like they Mm -hmm. like Smashing Pumpkins has nothing to do with Tupac has nothing to do with Garth Brooks and that was the beauty of it right you can find what you like and find what you you don't like but now all of it kind of starts to feel a little bit the same yeah it's a bummer
right? So, uh, so that's it, really funny because like you guys like you're having Twitter beefs with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with these, it's so fun. Yeah, it, it, it's Gotta it's great fun. Culture. But they entertain it every yeah. time. Like yeah. the fact that Ben Shapiro is getting into Twitter beef with Sexy Red. Or Nicki Minaj or any of these people, and they give him the time of day is the funniest part. Because their 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 reflex is to be ratchet, and it carries over on Twitter. So it's like obviously they're like, oh, I'll get into a Twitter fight with you, and and I, I like it, you know, I'll 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 get ratchet. It's kind like, of therapeutic. Does Nicki Minaj not have a better way to spend her time? But no, I think Nicki See, is he actually loves Nicki trolling. Minaj. Nicki she is loves a Republican. Nicki Minaj. Don't be fooled. Nicki Minaj right? is a whole Republican. She just name dropped MAGA in her most recent song. Like Nicki Minaj has been name dropping the Republican. What, what was party what was the while. lyric? What did she say? About Matt. Child. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> anyway, she still said MAGA regardless of what it stood for and the way she said it. But she was giving a shout out to her Republican doctor who was taking care of her behind and making her behind great again. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But still, in important a, context, yeah. a name drop is a name drop. But I think it's important that we continue to interact with these different people because yeah. we've said it before. We'll say it again. It's why I love this show so much. It's because politics is not just impacting culture anymore. Culture is impacting politics. So it's that much more important that we lean into this because CJ and I both get a lot of flack sometimes just because we discuss celebrities or because we'll mention yeah. them and it's strange it's like you have to they talk yeah. down to you like the fact that you care or have an interest in it somehow makes you less it's like uh, why are we yeah. still talking about Barbie why yeah. do you care about Barbie it's like this well, is a popular movie out right now and just because and if and we're not represented in those conversations which is why I think it's so critical that a platform like this exists then there's no conservative perspective to be heard and and Ashley St. Clair actually had a really good tweet about this is that, you know, conservatives complain about like the wokeness of Hollywood and movies and all of these things. But yet we demonize everyone who went into the arts, you know, for years. And so we have no one actually creating movies, no one actually creating a Barbie or, or whatever else. And I think that's a fair point. And I think that because for a long time we were always like, well, we've got, you know, we've got business good. You know, we're, we're running all these corporations, but now we're seeing we were even a little bit too nonchalant about that. We were resting in our laurels, and now all of these corporations are turning on us um, and absolutely, you know, selling out to ESG and, and, and all of these things. But yeah, I feel like we have to, if we're going to fight the culture war, we have to be ingrained in culture. The culture war isn't just, you know, stopping, you know, minors from transitioning or banning critical race theory. It's actually having conversations like this, right? And, and being, having a seat at the table, which I feel like we give it up. We, we refuse to sit sometimes it's yeah like to me i i get annoyed when they pretend like this stuff doesn't matter i'm like it's i'm like yeah. your kids aren't going to care what aoc has to say your kids are going to care what Nicki minaj has to say what uh what cardi b has to say that's what's Oof. going to like at the very least you should be informed about it and not act as if it doesn't matter because it does matter like it, it isn't it is going to impact your family it's why it's like why do you think that they fought against uh sound of freedom so hard yeah. because they understand that the power that movies have on people and they don't so the the if you want to say the left they understand the impact of these things which is why yeah. they attack it right mm -hmm. they get it uh, a lot of the people, especially on the commentator class on the right, who talk politics and strictly politics, refuse to acknowledge that this space is also important. Yeah, so, yeah. That's right. And the left understands that because yes. there's a reason that Joe Biden was interviewing the likes of Cardi B, as insulting as that is to the demographic he was trying to appease, which were the black and Hispanic, but it worked. Or he had the Ted Lasso uh, staff come to the White House and yeah. stuff like they get it. And Obama got it. He got it. Like the, one of my earliest memories in politics was like, I was like, why is this dude doing so many late night shows? Doesn't yeah. he have a job to do? Because he understood that part and parcel to getting your message out there is sharing it with as many people as possible. And back then that was late night shows. That's how yeah. you got your message out there. So it's like they get it and the other yeah. side doesn't get it. It seems like yeah. it feels like it sucks at their sides at all. But yeah. uh, it, that's the way it is right now. And people People need to people need to actually understand that lest you cede even more of the culture every single time. Yeah, so. I think Republicans are, are finally starting to really wake up to it. You know, the Republican National Committee and um, they're started working with you know more influencers to really impact culture and, and, and reach a younger audience, which I think is so crucial. We can't allow the Democrats to just really run the influencer game because these people have audiences of lots of young people who will ultimately vote. And if we're not 
represented uh you know those are those are votes lost and so i think that's a huge welcome effort and um the, the chairwoman's been super passionate about that and that's really good to see because for a long time you know we weren't working with influencers in the way yeah. that the left has and i think we saw the consequence of that in the in the midterm elections you have all of these young people um you know voting for joe biden despite the fact that you know our country is quite literally in the shitter like if you look at inflation you look at gas prices there was no reason that we should not have had a red wave right um but we didn't and it was and a lot of these gimmicks that happened were they felt like gimmicks to us because we're very intelligent people we're smart and sometimes we we're, we're we're a little too smart because we forget that the rest of america not may not necessarily be where we are right now not right? even that, that they're not smart they're just not paying as close attention yeah right they're so more it's, apathetic it's, yeah it's they're, they're not paying the same level of attention all right well uh i think that's a a dire warning to anybody who tries to pretend that culture, that pop culture, movies, television, music especially, like I think music even more than anything real, uh, really because it feels like in a lot of ways like culturally, movies have become very, very divisive. Music, you know, everybody, the, the joke was always like, back in the day it was like, it was like nobody who likes dramas hates a guy who watches comedies, but people who love rock and roll will mm -hmm. definitely, I see people in the chat, rap music sucks, right? Yeah. Like people who, but even that even seems like- that, it doesn't mean rap music and yeah. rap culture isn't influential to society and young exactly. people. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, just uh, <laughs> give up on those things and refuse to pay attention at your own risk, I say. So. Literally. All right, guys, let's get started. Like, I say let's get started. Like we haven't been doing this for like an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not to the main, main, main topics yet, but let's, let's go then. Let's talk about Andrew Tate because Andrew Tate had a, there's an article here from the Rolling Stone uh, that says that there's some leaked text messages yes. that highlight his tactics when uh, manipulating women. Now, I'll stress that you can't believe everything that you see in the media and they didn't provide the actual screenshots. They transcribed them. So maybe, you know, until we actually see them, don't completely believe everything in this article. But there have already been like so many fishy details to the Andrew Tate story and the Tucker interview didn't help at all. There's a Candace Owens interview with Andrew Tate that's coming soon. Uh, I wish it had come out already, but I want to show you guys the trailer for it uh, just because Candace Owens compared to the other Daily Wire hosts seems to be most favorable to Andrew Tate. And maybe that's why he took that appearance. Yeah. So wait, did she go out to see him then? Like, I'm, I'm not sure. He can't leave his house. He's so still on house arrest. I guess arrest, so, so yeah. Right. Well, let's, uh, yeah. let's watch this clip then real quick. Here we go. Eight. Long time. Refresh, sorry. Andrew Tate. Long time. I know, it's been a very long time. I'm about to get started, Candace. Good, get started. Candace. There was an old video, video that surfaced of you spanking a woman with a belt. I want you to explain to them yeah. what it, that was. I don't often tell people this, and I, I think it's the first interview I've mentioned it in. I'd be very careful how I answer this question because I'm currently under an investigation. You want to sit here and talk about what I did for money? I literally hurt people for money. I'm a little bit embarrassed about it, to be honest with you. I was talking about things in a way that I wouldn't talk about them anymore. I don't really like talking about it. I, I'm glad to hear that you're not proud of the video. Pornography as a whole is simply just, I think, a tool which is used to ensure that the male populace stays as docile as possible. Pornography is everywhere and men are struggling with it. But to me, what's even more upsetting is that these men don't have enough fortitude and enough mental strength to wake up and say, I'm better than that. What does Andrew Tate's life look like in the next five years? Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna stay like in this whole segment with my hands positioned I was, this way. I was seen, doing that. Too. Have you ever seen the? There's a. I what does it mean? Trevor Wallace had a video where he's like, "I'm a." He's like, "I'm an. I'm an engineer." And then he goes, uh, "It's a thing where he's like, I'm a entrepreneur." And being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur means you walk around like this all the time. <laughs> Gotta keep, you have to keep always, your hand position. Yeah. It's, it's when people the, do this in pictures, I cringe so much. Yeah. It's like so weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I've heard a lot of different things about Andrew Tate's camming business and OnlyFans business. Um, he said that it ended over 10 years ago. He's also said back in 2020, you know, I still have a few girls working for me. Uh, he said that at its peak, he had 75 women working for him in camming in four different locations where he was making over $600,000 a month. Um, so it's interesting to me that in this Candace interview, he appears to condemn porn when He's clearly built a huge portion of his wealth, if not the majority of it, off of porn when he believes that it's so destructive to men and now he's branded himself as a leader for masculinity. Um, so let's just get into the actual content of these messages. 
It's from a Telegram chat with uh, members of what he called the War Room. Uh, these are from June 2021, and these are members like, who pay to be in a private messaging chat with Andrew Tate. I don't know how much they were paying or if it was really worth anything, but I guess this is teaching them how to build this type of camming business the way that Andrew Tate did. Um, so, so he says that the virtue he looks for in these females is, uh, give me an average moron with no skills who's blind loyal. I judge basically all females by loyalty. If they're loyal and they won't leave, in the end, they'll do everything you want. It doesn't sound like the most healthy arrangement for a romantic relationship or a relationship with your boss, to be honest, especially if those things are mixed. Um, but yeah, he refers to these women as targets and assets that he uses to coerce into camming. Uh, one quote from the messages says, Ibiza Asset has agreed to do OnlyFans, PhD write-up forthcoming. When he says PhD, he's talking about the Pimpin' Hoes degree. Uh, this was his program that he had on his website, Cobra Tate, which is now... Yeah. Thank you. Hold, please. <laughs> Anyway, his, his website is no longer accessible on the Internet Archive, interestingly. Uh, that might have something to do with the investigation. So in later messages, Tate explains how one of the women who moved from her native country to be with him has, quote, lost her support networks at home and had been begging to see him. In order to make her more dependent on him, he tells them that he made up a story that he had spoken to friends of hers who claimed she worked at a sex club prior to meeting him, prompting him to become angry at her and threaten to kick her out. In the text, Tate appears to explain how this lie succeeds in putting the woman on the, de on the defense and making her more dependent on him. Quote, the real goal is for her to agree to never go anywhere without me, not even her hometown. I need her working. Tate includes a screen grab of a, te a text conversation between him and this woman in which he tells her, you are never going back to your hometown even to visit. You don't need to leave the house in Bucharest. We are together always. And the woman replied, yes, I understand. And this is clearly a tactic to isolate her from any type of support system so that she doesn't yeah. get to leave the cam business again like i don't know if these text messages in this telegram chat are real but if they are this is incredibly damning for his situation for his defense uh in romania well people are saying what is the crime being committed here well this would fall under the romanians uh definition of human trafficking which includes force fraud and coercion if they're there under false pretenses and they're working for you under false pretenses like a promise that you will be married and have kids and cohabitate then that would be a form of coercion. And uh, then also okay. he was, uh, do we have a super chat Yeah, here? $20 one there from Tom Bombadurp. Uh, speaking of fishy details in the Tate story, how about the two victims who took luxury vacations within a month of their tra traumatic event? Maybe strippers aren't the best character witnesses when trying to make a case. Yep, we'll, we'll have true. to wait and see. And like I said, the, the hardest thing for me here is, is discerning what is actually illegal and what is actually a crime here. Because a lot of it, it speaks to me of sp despicable behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't sound like a good person. But uh, I think a lot of people, when they hear human trafficking, they think of a bunch of women thrown into like uh, a shipping container. Yeah. You think of then, Sound of Freedom, yes. which when you yeah. look at the Andrew Tate situation, from what I understand, it doesn't sound anything like that, which has been... You know, and I think also too the Rolling Stone. I, I, very weary of them. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Yeah, if you yeah. remember, like their the UVA rape story that they got sued for, they accused uh, maybe was it soccer players, a cross players, well, lacrosse, of, I think. Yeah, right? of like gang raping some girl or whatever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely totally untrue. Got, totally yeah, untrue. and also Rolling Stone put out one of the biggest hit pieces against Sound of Freedom, calling it a QAnon adjacent yeah. conspiracy. But now all of a sudden they care about human trafficking when they can attack right. Andrew Tate yeah. about it. Which, I don't trust the source. Yeah, for sure. But I think, but I think, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. Is that okay? Obviously, pornography, cam business. Do I endorse as a conservative? No. Um, but how much of this is actually legal? And especially when you look at, I think the Tucker interview, which was interesting, when you actually 
describe how human trafficking is is defined in Romanian law. Yeah. It's very broad. You know, coercion. You know, convincing a girl to move and do and partake in this business. Um, th- is that what they're saying? Is 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 human trafficking? It's not what we would understand it as as Americans. What human trafficking yeah. is, and so I think it's obviously not ideal. Uh, you're not going to get an endorsement of <laughs> cam pornography from me. But at the same time, though, it's just. Well, the issue is like Andrew Tate voluntarily chose to live in Romania. Yeah. And on video says multiple times that he what something he likes about this country is that corruption is more accessible and you can basically do, quote, whatever the F you want. He's like, I'm not a rapist, but you can do whatever the F you want in Romania. Yeah. But the reverse of that, me and my friend um, were talking about that is that it's so corrupt and you can kind of do a lot of what you want, but it goes both ways, right? Right. If there's someone in the matrix who's coming for them and they want to, and they can write a bigger check Mm -hmm. than you can, Andrew, then it it, Deal with the consequences of like forsaking your home country for this other place where you have more freedom, supposedly. And also there was this uh, daughter of a Romanian politician who claims that when she was 16, Andrew Tate tried to recruit her into this cam business. So maybe... The prosecution has something to do with that. Mm. Um, I don't know. But. I do wonder also if some of the backlash that he's getting in Romania is because of his comments. Like he has made Romania seem like this safe haven for criminals. And maybe they're starting to see more crime and similar types of well, behaviors in a certain happening. Way it's true because Romania has the highest rate of human trafficking per million people in the EU. Mm-hmm. It's true that they, they have a high crime rate and trafficking is more common there than the rest of Europe. But is that because they're, and I'm genuinely asking this, is that because their rules on it are so lax? Because what I'm seeing here just seems like a profound level of narcissism. It seems disgusting. It seems immoral. But from my perspective of what human trafficking is, that's not what this seems like. So is their rate so high because they're so loose on how they define it? Possibly. I mean, I'm not any type of legal scholar. So. Yeah, I know. I'm just like hypothetically. But it's a good question yeah. to ask. Yeah. Um, Uh, But I mean, maybe they're doing this for political reasons, like, I mean, maybe geopolitical reasons. They have interests in seeming like they're more hard on crime now. And this is mostly, this is money that was stolen from cam sites. This is not. Well, the, the reality is this was a campsite business and then it evolved as the internet evolved into a a business where the women had tiktok accounts which were linked to OnlyFans accounts so when he says oh they're accusing me of stealing tiktok money that's not actually true it was linked to OnlyFans accounts which is where the real money was being made um and that's the kind of omission of truth that i really don't respect and also that that tucker really had a duty to press him on in that interview and he didn't yeah Um, So anyway, he solicited feedback from members of the war room and asked them what they would do to convince their partner to do sex work for them. Quote, I would try a good cop, bad cop ruse, writes one. Act deeply hurt by her refusal, flip it on her and get her to start feeling guilty or cry. And Tate says he'll be making the play tonight to get this woman to cam. Quote, since she moved to Bucharest, she's been fed, but nothing else. She's broke and she can't go home. She can't leave the house. I sound almost evil, but I'm not. I'm a shepherd leading the sheep. She doesn't realize that following me makes life better for her. Um, And he would tell these female partners, we're going to be traveling the world together. I'm working from my phone. We're a team. You're going to listen to me Uh, and let her sit. And if she doesn't respond to this type of positive reinforcement, let her sit broke to think. If in a few days she still refuses, then it's a failed attempt. Kick her out. Okay, so that line is interesting, right? Because he says, if it doesn't work, kick her out. So wouldn't that basically mean that they're free to free to leave? Yeah, did he do anything? Like, did he take their passports? Yeah. Did he did he remove any access Remains to them? to be seen. Yeah. Like, but yeah. I totally will concede that, like, these women made stupid decisions that mm-hmm. got them into a horrible situation, a horribly traumatic situation that they shouldn't have been in if maybe they had better guidance or a better support system or just you know a stronger moral conviction against doing these things like absolutely certain, like i would never point, end up in this situation yeah. at a certain point like uh, a lot of people who are not evil are going to say like at what point is the woman's actions her own responsibility to yeah. say yeah. no right that's like, yeah. that's that's but kind also, of where at I'm the same at time too, andrew yeah. tate is this thought leader for a movement that you know men need to be strong they ultimate accountability goes on men they're the leaders and that means you take the fall when something you do goes wrong mm. and 
I see a lot of people, you know, saying this, but then complaining about men having to do all the work. Mm-hmm. Well, in, in this case, it's ironic. Like, look, people are going to wonder why, why is it that Rolling Stone is okay with this type of human trafficking being targeted, but they're not okay with the human trafficking of children being targeted. At the very least, it seems like there's some type of socio-political yeah. agenda attached yeah. to it that makes you wonder, like, like one of the strongest forms of, uh, of censorship or, or like manipulation that a news article can do is decide what to cover and what not to cover. Mm. And by choosing to cover this in this way and that in that way, it says that they have an agenda there. Yeah. So people have a, you know, are going to rightly have at least mm-hmm. questions about it. But it's I've, difficult in this situation because the left wing media and the right wing yeah. media both have sort of corrupted intentions with how they talk about Andrew Tate. It's uh, in, in so we need to get to the truth, but nobody is trying to get there. But I think it's telling how pompous these people are, though, is that in, in the same breath that they shit on Andrew Tate, they'll shit on the sound of freedom. Yeah. And then they'll try to make you out to be some kook right. about human trafficking. And then they'll make it sound like Andrew Tate was running a billion dollar enterprise, you know, with women in shipping containers. When if you read the story, that's not really the, the case here. And, and I think where you're at is kind of where I'm at here. I think that at a certain point, you have to like just go down the list, okay? Some of these girls, they got on a plane to Romania from the United States, from wherever they're from. And then they proceeded to, you know, enter this line of work or whatever. They knew they were broke. They knew they couldn't get a flight back or whatever else. Um, And as he said here, he said if they didn't do, if they didn't work out well, then he would kick her out. That's kind of like, that sounds like a lot of bad decisions. It sounds yeah. like a lot of bad decisions that, that that woman made to get in that position. Um, and it doesn't sound like human trafficking as we know it here in America is my is, is where I'm at on the issue, I think. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's I don't very- want to downplay the accountability that these women have for the situation that in a lot of ways they put themselves in. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like, I want to reiterate that. Um, but again, he's he's leading this this movement of masculinity where... If men are the leaders, then men take full responsibility, yeah. right? So if women should just blindly follow the the guidance of the men in their lives, no matter whether it's you know your boyfriend or your father, mm. and they're not discerning about that, then this this is the type of situation that arises. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he staged a fake conversation between him and his assistant, who he called his bottom bitch. <laughs> Georgiana Nagel, who is uh, one of the two Romanian nationals being charged with him and his brother. And this, the goal of staging this fake conversation, he explained to War Room, is to dispel the woman's suspicions that he's trying to pressure her into camming while further convincing her to work for him. So in this screen grab, the bottom bitch asks the woman, why doesn't she work for me on OnlyFans? She'll make a lot of money. Andrew Tate says, I don't want her to think that's why she came to Bucharest. The assistant said, WTF, you're rich. Why would we need her for money? With a smiley face. She can work with me and make 3000 a month and live in Bucharest with you. She's taking pictures all the time and make that make no money. Why can't she sell them? And he'll show this screen grab to the woman to make her think that he doesn't have an interest in coercing her to cam. Um, and he said, I'll do this for every girl I get to work if you guys see the value. You guys can use your bottom bitch to do whatever she's doing. And he also sends a screen grab of a later conversation between him and the bottom bitch in which he appears to explicitly instruct her to get that woman to do OnlyFans. Quote, make, name redacted, take her OnlyFans pics. I want to see them. The bottom bitch says, okay. And he said, get her on OnlyFans. I want money from her. No time for drama. And the bottom bitch says, today she starts doing content. And it it almost sounds like it's fake just yeah. how self-incriminating this is, but there are other things that they heard when they wiretapped his phone calls yeah. on the Romanian compound that are just as self-incriminating. And it's like that girl that ran into the forest with her weave pulled off. Like <laughs> sometimes people do stupid things and they don't think about the consequences. You, you don't think that the police are gonna look at your phone and what you Google searched beforehand. Yeah. It's not entirely unbelievable. Um, and I, you can argue with the definition that Romanian prosecutors use for human trafficking, but mm. if that's the parameter, this clearly falls under it. Mm-hmm. If somebody was held against their will, 
if uh, the fraud claims uh, also are compelling that like he lied to them about the amount of money that was coming in and then there's a there's a claim there to be made about you know he did he give them the amount of money that was owed to them based on whatever contract may or may not have been written up if one was written up at all but I think that for this story it's going to be very hard to discern because nobody's going to trust any of the media outlets and he's such an insanely yeah. polarizing figure that no matter who covers it whether whatever side you are on you're going to have an article written by mm -hmm. some opposing journalist that's going to that you're automatically going to discount because you don't trust that news outlet like I said nobody trusts Rolling Stone right. At rightfully all. so yeah rightfully so yeah. and this is what i was talking about with michael knowles about andrew tate um which i think is really more important than whether or not he did anything illegal is that we should care whether he did something that was immoral and whether he should be a thought leader for young men that's the real trial being had in the court of public opinion um I don't know or even really particularly care whether he's going to be found innocent or guilty of these charges. Mm. Um, I just care about the overall influence that he's going to have going forward as an, uh, as a professional influencer. Yeah. He's like denouncing porn and saying that it's destroying young men's uh, relationships with women and it's bad for their mental health. But at the same time, he made all of this wealth that he says makes him anti-fragile to the matrix off of porn. Yeah. And I find that not just hypocritical, but it's evil. Yeah, I think, but I think when you have that conversation about, you know, Andrew Tate and his influence over young men, I think that an important part of that conversation is also his evolution, right? In, in that clip, he talked about how he wouldn't have posted that video today um, and how porn is something that he obviously doesn't mm -hmm. like now. And I think also another thing that's happened more so recently was his, um, like his, his, uh, his faith, like embracing, um, Islam in his case. Right. And mm -hmm. so, um, well, that's also interesting. Cause like he, I just saw him the other day, like reacting to the news that some historic building in the UK is being converted into a mosque, which mm -hmm. most conservatives would say is a terrible mm -hmm. thing. And, you know, the Islam Islamization of the UK is something that's going to destroy their culture. Yeah. But he's here celebrating it. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see him as like an ally to the conservative movement in that way. I've never understood why people view him as conservative anyway. Like nothing about him really resonates with conservatism. If you actually break down the things that he says and he talks about. Yeah. And I also am really curious, like all these different people who are taking his courses on how to basically lead digital prostitution, are they <laughs> ever going to be looked into as well? Because I mean, if they're studying this, they're paying money to be a part of these group text messages. They're learning for a purpose. They're just, I would right. assume they're not just there to chit chat with them. Yeah. Like, what are they doing? Like, how yeah. deep does this Did any of them go? enact this plan? Yeah. Someone personally? Hopefully not in Romania. Uh, <laughs> right. Or was it just because they wanted to talk to their idol? Yeah. You know? I think it's a yeah. big part of what you said. Like, the reason why he gets labeled that way is because very little in the way of anything not like conservative gives any two craps about what happens to men these days. So yeah. if you speak up for men in any way yep. that doesn't uh, it, strictly adhere to falling in line with feminism and prostrating yourself before, you know, neoliberal values, if you have any type of pushback that say, look, guys have to be strong heads of household, guys have to do, you're just automatically labeled, right? Because yeah. men are for a lot, in a lot of ways, their needs and their, you know, their concerns are pushed to the back of society now. Yeah. It's just not profitable. It's not something that people look at these days. So when you focus on that, you're automatically labeled that way. Yeah. I think Candace Owens had a good take on it where she was like, there are a lot of people saying like, you know, do, do we want to make Andrew Tate the voice of conservatism? And he's never said he wanted to be right. And mm -hmm. I think that there are people who try to put him into that party or that ideological binary, yeah. but he's never portrayed himself as wanting to be the next Tucker Carlson or be the next Ben Shapiro. He's just a guy, you know, telling men to act like men. And so I think that's another thing too. I like, I, I, would I think that he should be a role model for conservatism? Absolutely not based on the choices he's made and um, the lifestyle to an extent that he continues to live. Yeah. But do I think in terms of masculinity, can he speak to that? Yeah. I think that a lot of the things that he says in terms of, men needing to be more like men, uh, specifically young men, are pretty non-controversial and probably mm -hmm. a net positive. But um, yeah, I, I think we just have this tendency also to just uh, see everything through a political lens where 
I don't think Andrew Tate is a political it's figure. Like yeah. They're searching for some kind of messianic figure. Yeah. And it's like in Barbie. It's like there are so many people that watch the movie already and we're just like I want to think politically yeah. about this movie. So they go watch the movie and they're already looking for something woke. They're already looking for something not woke. And so obviously it's going to be very political to you, but to a normal person. And I, like I have, you know, friends who, who watched it who aren't political, but are conservative just in general. And they're like, oh, I didn't have a problem with the movie. But I feel like if I probably watched the movie just because I do this every day, I'd probably be like, oh, this is kind of more woke than other people would yeah. maybe yeah. perceive it as. So I don't know. Let's go to Super Chats. Okay. Shane H. Wilder said, uh, oh, no, I already read this one. Marcos said, have you ever ordered a meal from a restaurant and did not know how to eat it? For example, this one time I had lobster and I didn't know how to eat it. I'm horrible with chopsticks. I am. I hate chopsticks. I'm, I'm really bad at it. I get really bullied bad. in LA for not knowing um, how to eat my sushi with chopsticks. I'm the bully. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Him, Aldo Badazzoni, who also works at PragerU, these people. I'm like, I'm sorry that I am true to my principles and values. I'm America first. And in America, we eat with forks or so our hands. So. I'm foreign. Globalism is a, is a cancer yeah. on yeah. society. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Corey Anderson said, Brett, who do you like more, Mary or Hannah Claire? What? You can't, you can't ask a question, question like that. You know the answer is Mary. Yeah, you can't ask that question. I you just, no. Just Corey no Anderson said, Mary uh, Jag is one of my favorite shows, probably because I'm in the Navy. Also, Gilmore Girls is great. Jag was the uh, one that predated NCIS. That was the, uh, John, the David Belisario show that's about uh, military police. Okay. Yeah. Corey I'm Anderson. sorry, not military police uh, uh, prosecutions. The, the they prosecute members of the military. It's good. I mean, it's very dated, 1995 <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Freaking, I, I love all stuff that's old because uh, a lot of the Americana that's missing from the media today yeah. was baked into the culture back then in a way that they yeah. weren't even trying to do. Go watch old episodes of Walker Texas Ranger. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God, my great grandmother yeah. like lives in like this super super small town, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Would always watch these westerns growing up. Like, oh my God, and. And my my grandpa loved like Andy Griffith, like the Andy Griffith show. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's classics. Yep. Corey Anderson grandpa. said, "Sorry, did I go no, down? you're good. I was gonna say, um, my, my grandma used to be like, grandson, put on Little House of the Prairie. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Corey oh, Anderson said, God. Pearl is making fun of the ukulele chick. Do you think she really oh. put that much thought into it? Um, if she, I, mean, I don't know. If she, Wait, I mean, who's the real ukulele chick? The, that was the clean Miranda Ballinger. Sings video. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, oh. yeah. And I didn't hear her mention that. In I don't the, think she's that smart. Sorry. She, well, she didn't mention that in the Piers Morgan thing. No, no, no. A thousand foot deep end said this poll is going to establish where the majority of PCC chat lives: Northern U.S., the South, or Midwest. And happy Friday, y'all. Long time no chat. Welcome to the show, CJ, and welcome back, Xavier. In fact, with that Good being said, guys. guys, I think I'm going to end the poll since we've got, like, I always forget to end the poll. And I, I and they yell a, at you. Yeah. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, with 61% of the votes, Soda. Soda wins. Well, this is because well, of mass media. Everyone just talks the same way now. Especially well, it young should be people. soda. It's, it should be soda. Look, it took a long time to learn how to not say pop. I, I got mean, bullied out of saying pop when I moved to California. Good. Yeah, good. pop is so uncouth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, man. It's happened to me, too. Disco Jensen said, you know who got in, got the bag, and got out with a family and kids and hasn't complained yet? Gwen Stefani. Taylor Swift won't have kids. <laughs> she so still has plenty of time. Wait, how old is Taylor Swift? She's 32 uh, or 33. 30. She was born in 1989. She's got that album about it. Mm -hmm. Wait, did, did Gw like Gwen that. Stefani in relation to who? She was married to Blake Shelton, right? Like, yeah. Uh, she, well, she, is, she married is married still, to Blake yeah. Shelton? Okay. All right. Wait, I thought, are they divorced? No, Miranda Lambert used to be married to Blake Shelton, right? And then, so really? now it's Gwen Stefani. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were on The Voice together or, yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. Or one of those shows, mm -hmm. singing shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she sent a dollar without a message. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the Last of My Kind said, Taylor Swift's stamina might be the reason she can't keep a relationship. Think Milan Ackerman in The Heartbreak Kid. She'd leave Ben Stiller crying, then write a song. Stack that paper, Taylor. LOL. <laughs> she will make lots of money. She will always make tons of money off of it. She's certainly not mad at it. Let's do one more and we'll move on. Disco Jensen said, I almost forgot to be outraged about Fox grooming her own kids. Yeah, Megan Fox yeah. Uh, raised those kids, um, you know. Ugh. Gender non-conforming. to be outraged. <laughs> it's, it's like the um, it's like the lady who works for Disney, who's like, I've got one trans child and one um, pansexual, pansexual child. child, and you're just like, 
Which, like, statist- like statistically is improbable. It's No, yeah. it's impossible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's right? like, uh, statistically improbable in the and real world. And I'm just like, impossible. opinion yeah. discarded. Yes. Yes. Let's hold off on the rest. We'll come, we'll come back. All <laughs> okay. right. Uh, let's talk about Doja Cat, because Doja Cat is, Doja. She's, she's going along uh, in the same vein as some of these other celebrities. She's in a race to the bottom, just like Pearl. She's, she's telling her fans, <laughs> she's telling her fans, like, get a job. And now her fans want an apology. She told her fans that she doesn't love them. She said, you know, she mocked them for calling themselves the kittens and said, if you're a Stan account, you should get a job. But now the Stan accounts are coming back with a vengeance. And apparently they got interviewed by NBC News. Um, Did we read the one from Vatican II Electric Boogaloo or did I miss that one? No, we didn't. Okay, down at the bottom there. Oh, from a, it's a $20? Yes. Sorry about that. The reason Andrew Tate gets lumped in with conservatives is because conservatism means nothing anymore. Modern day conservatism is mostly liberalism from 15 years ago. Love the show. Pray the rosary every day. I mean, that's actually kind of fairly accurate because I still consider, like, in a lot of ways, like, I'm just a liberal from 50. Yeah. Uh, before the Overton yeah. window got pushed as far as it did, like it's a, it's a, you know what he is? He's a bar stool conservative. That's what he is. That's a, that's a, yeah, that's a, honestly a good description for a lot of people. I feel like today. he's a he's a David Portnoy conservative. We'll call yeah. him that. Yeah. But anyway, people are saying you know I don't even know what to think if Stan accounts without jobs are getting interviews from major media outlets. Like that just reinforces her point. Please, please just get a job. Help your family out with the house, uh, something. I don't think she's wrong. Cause I, I don't think a lot of people understand the magnitude of Stan culture and Stan Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like there are fan accounts with millions of followers mm-hmm. sometimes, like hundreds yeah. of thousands, if not millions of followers. And their entire job is updating people on like, what the charts are looking like, what um, gossip is going on. Like, it's a lifestyle. It's more than just a personality trait. Mm-hmm. It is a straight up lifestyle. And Doja Cat, I've noticed because I've been watching her, like, not as a stan, but watching her pretty closely because ever since she shaved her head bald and she shaved off her eyebrows, I realized I don't think she was doing it for attention. I think she was doing it for the opposite. Like, I really think that she wants to stop being sexualized. She doesn't like fame. She liked money. Like, she straight up put a tweet out saying it was a cash grab unpopular opinion on it but i really think she is trying to disassociate her star quality from her music because if you look at like 70 years or not 70 years ago let me not play with diana ross like that but however (laughs) many years ago diana ross was in the scene people knew her business but they weren't like in her business like they didn't know what was going on in her household where she was eating all these different Mm -hmm. things and she was Mm -hmm. the biggest star in the world outside of the beatles at that point but now it's like worse it's like these fans feel entitled to know what these celebrities are eating, what their politics are, what movies they're seeing, like every single detail of their lives. And I think Doja Cat is sick of that. So I don't blame her for being fed up with her fans being nosy and all up in her business when they need to be streaming and buying her songs. That's where their focus should be. And I think she has a point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why is it so triggering to them that she told them uh, to go get a job? Well, I'll tell you why. Like, this uh, this <laughs> fan account laugh. said she needs to just come out and I'm apologize laughing. and be sincere. Uh, one said, artists don't owe fans anything outside of surface level respect. It's a 50-50 thing, you know? I respect you for what you do, and you respect me in return for that support. Deactivating our accounts was really letting it letting it be known that the support can stop for her at any time. We do so much campaigning and promotion for her that isn't worth it if her comments are how she really feels. Do you remember when they had when there was the fake infographic about the Taylor Swift Union going around where these people were? Yeah, like, they uh, like made an it. entire official PSA on why she should break up with Maddie Healy because he's problematic. But then no, then there was also one about uh, starting a Taylor Swift Union. Like a, for her, like for, for her, her stand account, for, her, for her stand accounts, so like we want a say in who she dates, we want a say in when <laughs> she performs and where she yeah. performs, and it's and it worked because it's satire, but it's ridiculous yeah. because stand culture is so ridiculous yeah. that you could buy that there are people that actually feel yeah. that way. Yeah, that's why that why it worked. That's why that worked as such mm-hmm. good satire. But that's what it is. Like the level of entitlement that they feel towards these people. But the celebrities also have no problem reaping the benefits yeah. of that feeling. So it's a give and take, right? Like yeah. 
there are plenty of celebrities who just choose not to use like what is it Killian Murphy's like yeah what well, he goes what's a meme like he, he like you know there are, are celebrities mainstream celebrities usually because they've got the backing of these industries behind them where they they don't update their tweets they let somebody run their Twitter account they let somebody if they if they even have one and they understand that like if they value their privacy if they value you know being able to keep their family out of the public eye that's a sacrifice they may have to make to their bank account yeah. but a lot of celebrities now want to have their cake and eat it too they want to be extremely viral with the people that love them but they also want to have the privacy that comes from not doing that you have to pick a lane yeah mm -hmm. in that. No, fame can be a prison but it's also a choice and you have to realize if that's what the path that you go down this is what you're gonna kind of interact with and it, it's unfortunate because like, like like that i see it all the time cernovich uh, has a really good take on it he talks about like you should make content for the audience you want not the audience you have because it actually gets rid of a lot of this stuff right um if you constantly like for example like this conversation like, and you get it a lot often because you love to tweet about Nicki minaj um <laughs> I, yeah, I am a bar and so a bar. and i have a question for you after this actually about that oh, um, no. <laughs> so so, but like you've, when you tweet about the barbs or whatever, you get people like, you know, replying, why are you talking about this when we should be talking about the world burning down or whatever? And it's like, first and foremost, this is my Twitter account. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize it was CJ and X, um, you know, and you were de approving my tweets as I send them. Um, <laughs> but also, too, it's just silly. Like, it's like, it's like when people announce they're unfollowing you, it's like, yes. I didn't need your two week notice. Yeah. Right. I didn't like, need that. Leave a Yelp review. Le yeah. le the door is open. Walk yeah. across it. It's Walk like, across the threshold. Who are you? But who are you? <laughs> you got to say it with, a, with a whole chest. But, anyways, um, <laughs> Xavier. Your take about stands are interesting, mm -hmm. considering as a self-described Barb, yeah. I would love for you to tell me how you... I'm very interested in that conversation. I have yeah. to tell you that. Yeah. As a, so as a Barb, how do you, how <laughs> do you, do you square your position? How do you reconcile being a stand, okay. but yeah. also saying these people stand need to get jobs? Do you okay. run Do you run a stand page with like a, with like a graphic? Uh, you know, instead of a picture there, it's a picture of Nicki Minaj. And it's like Nicki Minaj daily. Not anymore. No, no I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, kind of, but no, no I'm kidding. Uh, no, here's the line. I am a very big Nicki fan because I've known about Nicki Minaj since 2004. So I'm just like a big fan. Like I love her takes on stuff. I think she's a great artist. Like I'm probably getting dragged in the comments for saying all this as we speak. But you know what? I said what I said. Somebody clip Wait, this. Here, yeah. clip, clip it. <laughs> Clip it. I'll say it again. He wants Nikki to see it, so yeah. please actually clip it for you, him. Nikki. Uh, <laughs> anyway, here's the line. I have a job. <laughs> my bills are paid. Your I bills are unaffected? My bills are unaffected, and I am unbothered with my piece. If Nicki Minaj never made an album again, I wouldn't die, and mm. my Instagram wouldn't die, and all of that, etc. So here's what it is. is These people have these massive accounts. Grown adults, mind you. Grown mm. adults yep. have these accounts where they are spending every moment of their day waiting and refreshing to see what it is that Nikki or Doja or all these people are going to say. I just like like to talk about because I like to listen to Nikki's music. I'm a big rap person. Like I talk about other artists too, mm -hmm. but I always make the most jokes about Nikki because I think she's just hilarious as an individual. Yeah. But I'm also not insane. And I'm not on Nicki Minaj's payroll, nor did I act like it. Mm -hmm. These people act like they are on Doja Cat's payroll. These people think yeah. that they are having dinner with Doja Cat every single evening. And you're not. I do think Doja needs to be a little more polite to her fans because yes these are the people who are putting money in her pocket mm -hmm. and now her bills are affected because she disrespected her fan base but her fans need to be serious yeah. they need yeah. to be serious about their lifestyles yeah. because this? they want that parasocial connection yeah. and they yeah. want doja cat to look them in the eye and say i love you that's <laughs> strange. It's yeah so that odd. is strange and i think like okay it's normal to have a stan account if you're a child but once you reach like your late teens, early twenties, yeah. just retire that Do you have stage any stan of your accounts? life. Because I, I did. I ran. Ah! They weren't called stan accounts at the yeah. time yeah. in like 2014. But I ran a fan page or two for like bands that I liked, and that's normal if you're a child and you, you know, don't have other more serious things to occupy your time with. Yeah. But a lot of these people are actual adults, and that's the scary part. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they want to hold you accountable for all of your personal life decisions. Like they're talking about her boyfriend. I don't know if you know about Jay Cyrus. Uh, they're trying to no. cancel her for dating this guy and they're calling him a racist, incel, misogynist, um, who likes to get rimmed, which it seems unrelated. <laughs> um, one of these things is not like the other.
But that's what I feel like made Doja Cat resent them so much. So I think it's justified. But in response to what you said about her shaving her head and, and her eyebrows off, I think she was doing that like sort of like Julia Fox did, where she got the lipo all over her body and shaved her eyebrows off and started looking mm. weird on purpose. She says it's to become repulsive to men, to like repel male attention, which kind of works. Like her audience is the girls and the gays. But girls and the you, gays. If if you're a woman that is like so afraid of like male attention that you would destroy how you look in order to repel men from looking at you, there's something pathological in that behavior. And also, Doja Cat hasn't entirely stopped looking for male attention. Like just the other week, we talked we talked about this. She posted a photo shoot where she's in a bikini and she's like sucking a hot dog and she's got a wig on and fake eyebrows drawn on and the caption says male gaze as in homosexual over male gaze the male gaze while she's catering to the male gaze so it's just hypocritical if you're wondering mm. um how the satire works this was the taylor swift uh union stuff it says fan work is real work remember oh, no. hopefully oh, this God. was satire were you not here i think you might have been i think i was out of town so it says fans do the vast majority of promotion and marketing for taylor swift without being compensated yet we as fan workers still have no formal bargaining power in the musical direction or brand <laughs> identity of the celebrity we have collectively <laughs> created uh, let's move on. The Taylor Swift Fan Union offers fan workers the ability to collectively bargain for a creative vision of Taylor Swift that better aligns with our shared values. The TCFU also demands the recognition of our labor through compensation and health benefits. Health benefits. Uh, recently, many fan workers were harmed by Taylor's unilateral decision to date an alt-right extremist without union consultation. The TCFU unequivocally stands against hate and will work towards a future where this kind of workplace violence Violence never happens again. Notice they're all doing the, the red salute. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, it says, uh, the, to maintain accountability to fan values, we propose a seasonal meeting between Swift, her management, and elected TCFU representatives to come to a collective agreement on matters relating to her future musical output, social life, touring schedule, commercial endorsements, and fan availability. Again, it's satire, Sorry. but it's not far off from some of the way that these not people feel about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, as fan workers who have dedicated countless hours to studying and constructively criticizing Taylor's this? celebrity, we are uniquely well positioned to offer creative suggestions for her career moving forward. Who better than fan workers to determine what fan workers That's want to That's the lesbian need? flag. They're serious about that part. Because oh, yeah. I've seen that on like different... Uh, just like feuds on Twitter where they actually feel like they should be entitled to some of the marketing decisions. Like it, it's yeah. so unserious, but they're like completely serious. And the one thing I do agree with that they said in there is Taylor should be giving them health benefits, you know, mental health benefits. <laughs> that's, people that's, need a I haven't even gotten really. to it yet. So it says many fan workers are still processing the trauma of Taylor's <laughs> association with the alt-right, despite her previous uh, commitment to BIPOC and LGBTQIA2 blah, 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 allyship. The TCFU looks to establish emergency health services for all those still suffering including therapy and hospitalization costs wow. no because there were literally wow. people in the comments when she started dating maddie yeah. healy who find him problematic were saying like i've been crying about this <laughs> like i'm in tears right. she, this is so invalidating people are saying they're we're saying this is satire as a cope i'm saying satire as a hope not a cope yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. i hope it's satire Hopefully. like like I mean, this is why i said like if i were doja cat i would hate my fans too yeah, yeah. Like, I would resent them like because imagine, they are, a lot of them are losers. Imagine being Taylor Swift and reading this and being ever feeling safe leaving the house yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> well, this well, is like, why she has for private security. Well, have you seen the videos of like Livy Dunn? Like she, like yes, she's not this even, is what we were talking about she, the other just, day. Yeah. Just, yeah. She's like not allowed to go to class anymore because of how crazy people are towards her. And it's just, it's insane. Like, but also too, it's like, why are they so number one, like telling they want veto power over who she dates. I guarantee you these people are not unhappy hopeful relationships they can't be right because why are you so they're in a relationship with taylor Swift? right yeah, yeah. They're, they're in, in their mind and in their dreams but it's just 
there. It's absurd. It's, it's absurd. Cra- it's like, did you see the video of the like? There was there was this great video of the concert where she's singing. Um, she's singing never ever like never. We never get back together. And like, there's like everybody screaming, and the women are just like you can hear like a guttural sound in their voices. And there's just one guy sitting down with his head down, and he's just his shoulders are slumped. Yeah. He's very clearly there with his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. And there was just, also a, a video miserable. of a girl facetiming yeah. her yeah. ex boyfriend during that song. It's insane. insane. Wow. Oh my God. It's insane. Psychotic. Have so, you seen or have you guys seen like some of the videos where these celebrities encounter their super fans? It is cringe. Because you'll have these like five foot two little singers like Ariana Grande meeting this six foot grown hairy man <laughs> and they're like on, about to get on their knees and worship her in like the weirdest Pray way. There's Grande. no like normal uh-huh. human response. I'm gonna hear you that. out, but <laughs> they're not doing the type of worshiping you would do if you saw Ariana Grande. You'd be going to Pound Town. Oh. <laughs> 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 Don't show Ariana this. Well, just um, <laughs> just what you should do. What you can do is get married real quick, and she will be way more interested. Exactly. Yeah. Married. Exactly. Get married, exactly. have exactly. a kid, and, and married, she'll be all up on you. Have a child, or you know, do you guys talk about Brianna Chicken Fry uh, on the <laughs> oh, show? Oh, I saw a headline about her dating uh, um, Zach Bryan. Yeah, right? she's dating Zach Bryan, and there, and her thing is, is that she always overlaps. So she did an entire uh, podcast about how like she doesn't really like the word cheating; she just calls it overlapping. So. Uh, so and you gotta have a it's, roster, it's like, it's as like, Paul yeah. her daddy it's, taught her. Right, right, right. It's like, area uh, codes, it, yeah. It's like, area codes. yeah. It's it's like having an entanglement if you're Will Smith's wife. Yeah, there you yeah. go. I didn't have an affair. I had an entanglement. An entanglement's a very real thing, but that's another discussion. That's for whatever. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Oh man. Situationship. Just, um, I like, like I said, can't blame. Can't. Blame. That's another term, right? That's like we, we we've we've over term like we have too many terms for everything now. Yeah. Like it, back in the day. It was just uh, you were a little going nuts. steady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now seeing it's... somebody. Yeah, <laughs> right. we just yeah we were just redefining every word. Like it's so funny. I was talking to um, our CEO. I've been teaching her all the the Gen Z words and like explaining her the talking stage was honestly difficult for me because it's like so hard to like talking it used to be like basically dating I guess at one point but now it's just mm-hmm. like this weird stage where maybe you're exclusive, maybe you're not exclusive. To me, it, it, it means exclusivity. To other people, it doesn't mean exclusivity. So it's just like all of these words are just so confusing and it creates this system where like mm-hmm. I feel like two people may genuinely never be on the same page about what they are, what mm-hmm. this is, because like the definitions are just so inconsistent. Now. That's why like there was this clip of this girl on whatever who was asked to explain what a talking stage is mm-hmm. and she could barely get a coherent sentence yeah. out. But I sympathize with her, even though people were calling her stupid. I mean, she probably wasn't the smartest girl at the on the panel, yeah. but like, I sympathize with her because there's no actual way to explain something that nonsensical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah then you have words like, <laughs> non-words I should say, where you have to explain the difference between getting flown out and flewed out. Uh, getting uh, flewed out means <laughs> you're about to go on some city girl stuff, like you're getting flown to, uh, Pound Town potentially getting flown out. It's like you might be going somewhere to have a little icy. Maybe be on a podcast, like a podcast. <laughs> I said pound cast. Guess, guess, if, if it's if it's if it's Ibiza, it's always float out or no, Dubai. Flew, that's float out. You can because you're about to go out there and be a city girl. Wait, if you're going to Ibiza, Ibiza, yeah, flew, that's, yeah, that's flew out. out. That's flew yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Flown out is like you know you live in like Nebraska. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you get flown in Nebraska, and you're just going to see somebody. It's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. If, if you're going there, or if you're going to, yeah, any of those places, right? Like <laughs> yeah. when the girl says, like, "Oh, I, it, what was the story?" Like the one lady, she's like, and he was he was gonna fly me out there, and she was talking about it like it was a good thing, and she just clearly didn't know what she was being flown out there for. I think that we had talked about that. Well, there was this TikToker who was clearly an escort, like Mm -hmm. a high end escort who was talking about how this guy flew her to Dubai and like took her on this multiple day luxury vacation, had her stay in this beautiful luxury apartment and took her to dinner and took her on a yacht and da da da. And she says, you know, girls don't expect anything less than this on a first date. Meanwhile, all the comments are like, dude, you're a prostitute. (laughs) Yeah. And like, you should never expect a wedding ring because it ain't coming. (laughs) No, like, no. She, she really typed that out thinking she was empowering women with that. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just insane. It's just insane. These people are just on some hard drugs. Like, don't be a thought for free, girls. Yeah. Just don't be a thought. Right. Oh, yeah. All right. Mary, let's go to Super Chat, shall we? 
Unusable Alpaca said, Warriors on HBO Max is amazing. Season 3 just oh. dropped. It's The Sopranos meets The Badlands meets Gangs of New York in 1850s San Francisco with Kung Fu. Wow. Brett will love it. That's a strong endorsement because that's one of those shows that I pass by every time. And I get it mixed up with that Kung Fu remake that they made on uh, on the CW, which was really, really bad. I'm going to have to go and check that out, my friend. Thank you for that recommendation. Christmas Loving Engineer said, I like to think Megan Fox was stuck trying to write her response and saw miserly on her word of the day calendar and rolled with it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can hope, right? <laughs> Perturbed Alpaca said, past pets of PCC aren't a downer. I think it's sweet that fans want to memorialize their pets on PCC. That's true. Yes. Uh, let's do one more, and then we will quickly go through the world's most depressing story. Yeah, we are way over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Disco Jensen said, that made me spit out my soda. <laughs> I don't, uh, know, I don't exactly know what a soda is. I know what a pop is, but I, know what, <laughs> I, I don't know what a soda is. All right, let's hold off on the rest. We'll okay. come back. Let's talk about the world's most depressing story that I think yeah. some people will actually probably yeah. uh, enjoy hearing about, because it's a little bit depressing, but it's also a bit of an affirmation as to a lot of the things that people complain about, uh, especially stories like this on this channel. Only fans model goes viral after quitting as she's not attracted to men anymore. Basically what she said is look, she joined OnlyFans and the messages she got were so disgusting that she's no longer attracted to men. Yeah, she said like in this line of work you're never going to see men be more authentic and real and not in a good way uh, than you will just encountering them in everyday life and that it's t destroyed her feelings of attraction toward men completely. I buy that 100 And this is a year yeah. in, but at yeah. the end of the video, she doubles down and says, but I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit until I'm physically stopped because Poetry. I'm not a quitter. I like, I love the idea like, that she's like bitch, a pro athlete. Crazy. She's like, until yeah. the final bell, I'm not giving up. Yeah. Like, until the final <laughs> dong, I'm going to keep doing yeah. this. Like, like a, a, motiv how? a motivational speech on how to be a thought. Yes. Like, I never thought I'd hear yeah. She's never like, I that. feel dead inside. I've been totally desensitized. I am depressed beyond belief. The only reason to do it is money, but I'm not a quitter. Right. Like, at, at what point will it be enough for you? Yeah. And it's funny you say, or that she says that because it's like, just like how she is desensitized. She is demoralized by pornography. The viewers have that tenfold. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. The viewers mm -hmm. are continuously watching this disgusting stuff and needing more and more to saturate their fix because porn is destructive. It is a yeah. drug. And this OnlyFans culture is destroying relationships on both sides. Like, I genuinely... I'm concerned for a lot of the people who are making this kind of content because where it's leading yeah. them is so just ungodly. Yeah. 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 And for her to say that she's repulsed by men, I, I, this may be a little bit of a hot take, but, but it shouldn't be. Men respect women who respect themselves. And if you don't respect yourself, obviously, because you're out here selling your body on the internet like some digital prostitute working the virtual street corner, then why are you upset that they're giving you the same energy right. that you're giving off? But but I will also say that the men are not innocent here either. Yeah. Like I've been no, very no, critical. No, I've been very absolutely. critical of that. Yeah. I talk about it often. I say if you if we as conservatives want to be all uh, you know anti OnlyFans, we should also be anti the men who are creating a demand for this type of industry That's to thrive and to one, succeed. The number one comment you saw in here is like, yeah, like you can be mad at the women all you want, but the men like the the free market wins in yeah. the end and the men make this market possible also you said like they're, they're on the, the the they're on the digital street corner yeah. is that in digital pound town it's oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> she, you know a, she could be the mayor of of digital pound town like, you know se yeah. sexy red is up for election it's yeah. like a sims <laughs> i i'm just She's saying like out. how she feels about men after receiving all of these disgusting messages Imagine how the men f who don't subscribe to her OF feel when they see all of these women who yeah. are doing this that are soliciting disgusting, perverted attention this way. Yep. Like you're just as bad as you're paying customers in that sense. They don't feel that way though. They feel like, I think they've talked themselves into feeling like, like, look, I'm just filling a, a market. You know, it's just yeah. business. It's like, it's kind of like the CEO, like like the, the CEO of McDonald's. I would never let my kid eat, eat McDonald's, mm -hmm. the, the CEO of Coke. Mm -hmm. uh, not soda, but you know, Coke, the, the actual company. <laughs> Coca-Cola. Co Coca-Cola. He's like, I, no, of course I don't let my kids touch that stuff right yeah. nuts like uh she wants to like have her like in a lot of ways she wants to have her cake and eat it too she wants to yeah, yeah. make the content but doesn't want to yeah. be associated with the content yeah we talked about yeah. this uh woman who works as a virtual girlfriend and she says she makes thousands of dollars a day and has about three thousand boyfriends uh through her only fans yeah. and 
none of these men she would ever consider to be her actual boyfriend, yeah. right? They're off the market to any woman who has any self worth. Yeah. Who like who would waste their time? With any guy that subscribes to an OnlyFans So account. literally, yeah. like, to be the... And, and this lady has her an actual real-life boyfriend on top of the 3,000 boyfriends. Supportive. Who supports... Yeah. So it's like... The, Thanks the, for the Nintendo Switch, babe. I'm going to go get yeah. my vasectomy. Like, <laughs> it's literally so that guy. Somebody clip that, please. Um, <laughs> like, like, it's one of those... It's like, it's like, if you want to... If you want your chance with the OnlyFans chick, you have one requirement. Don't subscribe to other... Only fans chicks. If you yeah. can't even pull that off, then you know you're you're in. I just can't imagine as a man being in a relationship with a woman like that. You know that that anyone can just pay four ninety nine a month to see. Let alone um, imagine being one of the men paying that four ninety nine right. a month. There's right. so much. I don't understand how girls make so much money on. OnlyFans, but, especially but the non-celebrities. The thing is, they don't make so enough money. Free porn. No, some it's, of it's, them do. It's just uh, yeah. for most of them, they're the SoundCloud rappers of women. They're, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Is crazy. It's their side hustle. You it's know? Their, yeah, it's like they, they understand what it's like to then be underappreciated. You're right. Yeah. The, the vast majority of women on OnlyFans are not making more than what, like two hundred dollars a month. Yeah, it's only the very top percentage Imagine, point or yeah. fraction of a percentage that are making a living off of this, yeah. but. I don't care if you're making two dollars or a billion dollars off of OnlyFans. This is going to spiritually destroy you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like imagine defiling yourself for two ninety nine a month just so you can put digital hooker on your LinkedIn profile. It's absolutely ridiculous. But it's just and like it's like a like to me. It's not even that. It's like it's like you do all this and what it pays is your phone bill. Yeah. If, if you're making like a hundred, two hundred dollars, like like I I get the allure of the women that are like the top 0.1%, like they're making yeah. insane amounts yeah. of money. And a girl like this one, uh, she she's like, look, if you're making if you're making that much money, it's very hard to yeah. stop, yeah. Well, let's, right? Let's take it a look is. at the video. Okay. Here we go. All right. I'm being so honest, that really is like the only upside to doing it. She's but talking about just money. She looks like Adam Driver. The ability to very quickly make, make extra cash. But I think again, like just over, the course of a few months of like half a year or so just going really hard at it um i think i didn't let a lot of like the messages get to me but i was lying to myself and i definitely think that it's like really worn on me over time and it's not to say that i don't have like really good guys on there following me and like monetarily supporting me even like checking in on me at times where i like you know earlier this year I definitely disappeared for a few months even on here but like, hey, I haven't that, seen your like, tits in a few months. You doing good? Even yeah. those okay? people are not people that I would call when I'm having a really hard day. Just makes it feel just so fake. And I'm not sitting here saying that like I ever got on there to make friends. Let's be honest, it's really just to make money from a bunch of horny men. <laughs> but I guess I'm honest. just trying to say yeah. that. Just know that if you are a person who's ever been interested in doing this or if you've like ever been curious about it, there really is just like such a um like I feel a little bit dead inside. I feel completely desensitized. And I don't know, like not not to sound funny, but I really don't feel any type of like desire or like attraction to men in general anymore and that's also because of my you know my personal collective experiences that I've had with like dating like the wrong types of men and things like that but I think with this line of work men you really you will never catch a man being more honest and more authentic and more real and not necessarily in a good way than they are and the way that they present themselves to girls who do stuff that I do. I can't even imagine what it's actually like for real life SWs. Like, I'm sure it's like 50,000 times worse for them. Like, at least to a certain extent, there's like a level of protection for me just given that I'm like behind a screen, right? Like, I'm yeah. never actually going to like see these guys. Yeah. It's annoying that a lot of the comments are generally supportive and they're saying like, don't delete this. This is an important message for people to hear. Mm -hmm. It is an important message, but the refrain is always every single time. But if it makes you happy, then you should keep doing it. Like if you if doing OnlyFans makes you feel happy, then you need to investigate why you desire that type of attention mm -hmm. because yeah. it's a pathological 
thing inside you. Like it's probably yeah. from childhood trauma. Part like if you're is... happy when you're doing something that's self-destructive, then just go to therapy or yeah. go to church. It would be like me, like if I was still using drugs and people, and I was like, yeah, yeah, but but I'm a, not I'm quit. a legally I'm, not a quitter. Right, I'm a yeah. legal adult who's consenting, and it makes yeah. me happy. And Anyone you know, who yeah. actually cares about you would call you out on that. Yes, you know who some of the happiest people you'll ever find in the city are crackheads yep. <laughs> so like if that's the case like they should keep doing crack because like they're happy and they're thriving when they're on it but it's destructive for yeah. them and i genuinely do feel kind of bad for her because i don't think that she knew the gravity of no, how toxic didn't. this was yeah. going into it yeah. and that's why i even have a lot of respect for black china i had the opportunity to meet her behind the scenes at fox and oh, cool. um, for those who don't know like she made a quarter billion dollars billion with a b on only fans but she still decided to quit because she realized how toxic it was she realized how bad of an example it was to mm -hmm. the girls who follow her and a lot of people said like okay like you made 250 million dollars of course now you feel like you've made enough money to quit don't be fooled because look at how many people are st like are already rich but are so desperate to be richer yep. if she only yep. cared about making as much money as possible she wouldn't be hustling and she has like a wigs brand or, or something with hair she has some kind of brand now that she's like pushing hard she's doing like modeling she's doing these kind of things to make an honest dollar and if you, she just wanted to make money she would have stayed on only fans selling yeah. herself and you do have to offer them a way back right you can't just then excommunicate them and say you did this this is who you are forever like if you want to make a change in life that's something to be applauded mm -hmm. because everybody deserves a chance at redemption mm -hmm. and in this case right like uh it's like i was saying like if i was to still want to because i'm i'm an i'm an addict in recovery and if i was to say like i just want to do this i'm not hurting anyone else like it's uh, i'm not hurting anyone else who what business of yours if i choose to do that well the people that love you you know if they see what it's doing to you then they're going to say look that's it's still a problem like yeah. you may not feel like you're hurting me but i care about you and you're hurting yourself i can't speak for every girl on this platform but if i was her friend i would say like look like I can't stop you from doing this, but you certainly don't seem happy. Yeah. You don't seem fulfilled. But like, if she had supportive people in her life like that, they would have told her not to do this in the first place. But female friendships have been so utterly destroyed that you know you'll be ostracized from a female friend group if you don't universally celebrate every decision that your female friend makes, yeah. yep. including yeah. ones that are self-destructive. But if anyone you actually care about, you're going to call them out on it. Yeah. Um, well, and, and for the people who are already rich, but they continue on OnlyFans, even though, you know, it, you could retire at like 22 on the money that you made from it. It's it, you know that that's not because they're chasing the money at that point. You're you're chasing the validation, a, that, that and validation the and attention because you think that your sexuality is the only thing you have to offer the world. Yeah. And, you know, if you believe that, like, try to challenge that belief, do something yeah. else with your life. Yeah. And let's not pretend that this is the that this makes up the majority of men and women in the country. Like uh, this is not a majority of women. There are very yeah. few OnlyFans yes, creators. It's like two it's million. True. Or but something. there are way more guys who are watching OnlyFans girls. So. Even then, I would hope that like if if you're to not um, paint all women in the same brush as the women who chose to do this as a platform, then yeah. you have to also not paint all the men all men in the same brushes. Although you're right, there are more men doing. Uh, watching this content that not all men yeah. are the ones on these platforms yeah. and, True. and consuming True. it so yeah. we we get in our we get ourselves into trouble because it's part of the job on shows like this to broad brush and to talk in in a mm -hmm. wider scale but on on the like that's the macro level right and in the on the smaller scale in your everyday life is this something that is an issue for you as an individual i would say that most people would say no like they you know maybe they know somebody who like does anybody know anybody who like admits to consuming this content yes like yes yeah. okay so well, like, like only fans that, see that's the thing i don't know anyone who subscribes only fans content because i just wouldn't be able to take them seriously like you were paying for porn yeah like porn it's is really the free. internet dude yeah like it's uh, from a financial standpoint i'm questioning you know you and then from a moral standpoint i obviously <laughs> yeah. don't agree with it but just even financially you're like also it's done with your money right yeah, yeah you're also record, not friends with any of these people there's I just still know enough that shame in our culture that they wouldn't actually yeah. admit to but doing there's that not. Yeah. and the thing is yeah. you know what i think the one of the big overall messages of doja cat's fans or doja cat herself and also this girl from only fans is this is a result of the lack of accountability culture because you know the phrase like they want their cake and they want to eat it too people are so comfortable with, with being able to do what they want say what they want and just have no repercussions so yeah. she really thought like i don't understand the mentality of going online 
posing as a, or being a sex worker, being nude all the time and think that there's not going to be any toxicity that comes with it. And yeah. I do believe her that she did not understand what was coming her way, but that in itself is a problem yeah. for Doja Cat. She hates fame. Like you, from what I've been able to read, that it's going on with her feuding with her fans. She doesn't like the super fandom. She doesn't like any of that. She just wants to be an artist. Yeah. I respect that. But when you go mainstream and you get these huge record deals, you know what you're signing up for. You're yeah. signing up for crazy fans who might try to kill you, who might try to stalk you, who are going to do everything that they possibly can to be as close to you as they possibly can be, regardless of your boundaries. And people need to understand that we're not in a world full of good people so mm -hmm. you have to understand that there is going to be accountability and there's going to be consequences to every single decision you make i yeah. wouldn't be a political commentator if i wanted everybody to love me mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah right. there's an only fans girl that recently like had a home invasion from a guy who was her, one of her subscribers who's trying to record her in her own home yeah mm -hmm. like those, those are the type of risks they don't tell you about but wow. get your bag queen whatever yes. yeah. all right let's tell we had a bunch of super chats let's <laughs> yes. get through them James Greer said, Roll Tide. Roll Tide. <laughs> Third Crisis that. Party? The Ninja yeah. said, David Allen Coe, if, if That Ain't Country, good song. Uh, Tom Bombadurp said, Is Pearl really going out of her way to find black women? East London is a minority stronghold, hence the crime rate spike in the past decade. Well, I, I don't know where in London she is, but it's like in her gated community. She's incredibly wealthy, so I don't know. Joshmo32 Electric Boogaloo said it was coochie stretched, not scratched. See, I said stretched Back for the check. longest time, but then oh. everybody started telling me it was scratched. And then she said to the someone Mandela else on Twitter, effect. it was scratched. <laughs> so she's probably saying both. Okay. Grotti said common sense will prevail eventually. Maintain the hope. Happy early 420. My Friday off is getting better by this episode of PCC. <laughs> buck, buck. Buck, buck. Um, and then two from Beanbag Actual with no message. Thank, Thank you. you. Ryle Kittenhouse said a stray shopping cart just ran over a family of traveling penguins. That is all. Mary, I'm not you, to blame for this. Did you leave that <laughs> shopping cart out? That might have been you. Uh, I, no comment. <laughs> the last of my kind said Pearl addressed it by saying her recruiter was Jamaican and that she doesn't really know who's coming until the day of filming. I don't know how much I buy it. Well, that's another weird thing that people were pointing out is that most of the people she hires as well are black and that I, she also like massively underpays them. It is. It is possible that she doesn't know. Like if you've got a if you've got like a producer who's just who's you know bringing people on, you might not know. Depending on how busy she is, I don't know how you know no. what her schedule is like. But if she's got a lot going on, she might not know who that person is until the yeah. day of the interview or the day yeah. of the episode. I can yeah. believe that. No. Tom Bombadurp said the only thing worse for men than porn is marriage. <laughs> Disavow. Go home. You God. sound bitter. Vatican Two Electric Boogaloo. Sorry, we already read that one. Corey Anderson said. Xavier, do you like NF? The rapper NF. Oh, I'm thinking there's like a song or two that I like of NF's, but I I don't know. I don't too even much. know who that is. I like NF. I Let can't even down think what is the song a bop. Is. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, I, I yeah. NF is really really good. Bender McSimpson said, "Helping to keep the lights on." Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, KM said, "What's worse, Swifties or Beehive?" Definitely the Beehive. Like they're way Ooh. more crazy. The about Beehive her. will literally send like reports of bomb threats to the FBI <laughs> on your behalf. Uh, no, the Barb's did that. Okay. The bar it was either the Beehive your or people? the Barb. <laughs> My, your people is crazy. Uh, <laughs> but it was either the Beehive or the Barb's. They're very intertwined. Um, ended up having like the FBI investigating them because of bomb threats. So yeah. I would probably say them. I think Taylor's fans are just like more yeah. swarming but the beehive will like actually ruin your life yeah swifties will just like like shit on you a little bit like when i posted a picture with scooter braun like i did get some dms and i was they what? were like they were like they're like how dare you take a picture with scooter <laughs> braun blah 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 i was like i don't know i don't know taylor right. pictures are not I'm endorsements not, yeah, pictures are not right. endorsements number right. one back in the day um, they would have complained about it on live journal you guys might all be too young to know what live journal no, is, I don't know but what it is. uh yeah like just if you know you know <laughs> but, Tom yeah. Bomberb said I know who Amaranth is because of you guys that isn't a thank you have you heard she has ovarian failure karma is a beach after all is that Yikes. what it is is it karma I did hear about that I guess that's sad she, yeah that means she's infertile um, also whatever happened with her like getting a divorce from that abusive husband they're still together I'm what's sure. that about who knows 
The last of my kind said the groups of friends started saying having conversations with instead of saying talking. Bring back saying going steady. LOL. Having, having conversations with sounds like such a human resources yeah. like, way of talking about your That's love life. That's what's happened to dating is this right. HR <laughs> language. It sounds, it's, it literally, no, to me, it sounds like contract negotiations. Like, look, we're looking to trade Shohei Otani from the, from the, from yeah. the angels to the, yeah. to the blue Jays. And they're like, we're in early discussions too. Or but we're like movie it's an arranged stars. marriage. Speaking, Speaking of it. HR though, that's how, you know, a girl is really done with you. And she starts texting you. Like she's like the human resources director at your job. I'm at she's capacity. Like, she's like, unfortunately <laughs> we'll have to connect when I'm more so available. But until, <laughs> then as like, per my last text message oh, yeah man. oh if you Don't get hit with the that. per my last text <laughs> there's a $20, that one's gone there's a 20 dollar one there from christmas loving engineer uh crisis party contribution nice to catch one live these guests were great Awesome. It, guys. Also, I, I wonder if he's talking about Chris. I, I, I don't know what Christmas loving engineer would be the reference to, but Denise Richards played the least believable uh, nuclear physicist in one of the James Bond movies. Because believe it or not, nuclear physicists don't look like super. Didn't models. you watch Barbie? Hot women can do anything they want. Oh, right? I forgot about they that. They can rule I, the world. I missed. I missed that part. Shane H. Wilder said, well, this was a great episode. I laughed. I cried. Mary, <laughs> Mary nearly died of laughter. Have a great weekend and God bless everybody. God bless. God bless. I, that, I just lost it. Like that <laughs> talk over there is not real. <laughs> Why was she doing the Baphomet thing? Like, what was that? It was definitely a sign that she saw something demonic. Yeah. She knew what she was yeah. doing. And the like the craze of people trying to date her now is wild. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if she's if she's single, you know, send me a message. I'll, I'll, you're shooting your I'll, shot. You're shooting I'll, your I'll, shot. I'll, I'll so live on Pop Culture Crisis. I, you're shooting your I shot will right now. I take her out. I, no. <laughs> you like girls who she, see lizard people? Uh, look, no. Don't say uh, you'll take her out. Yeah, She'll like start on a whole other yeah, delusional yeah. rant. No, I, I I like the idea that she just likes her privacy. And I think somebody said that wasn't she married or like they said that she was. Uh, Does she have a wedding ring on? Like because I checked like, and I didn't see one. Yeah. Have they even confirmed her name? I saw two different names. Yeah, I don't think they did. Nope. All right, guys. Guys, before we go, would you hit the like button on this video? Subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. All right, let's go this way. Xavier, let everyone know where they can find you. Hello, guys. Thanks for tuning in. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, my at name is at Xavier. It's X-A-V-I-A-E-R. And Twitter is at Xavier D. Make sure you get the spelling right. They got to yes. get the spelling right. <laughs> yeah, my mom got it wrong. Uh, error on my birth certificate. So... You know the vibes. Oh the man, vibe. it's, it's like you just one mistake and just forever. Yeah, she looked yeah. it. She liked it. Just, she just thought it had a little more, you know. Add some flair. Yeah, yeah. a little more flair for to it. All right, flavor. CJ, <laughs> let everyone know where they can find you. Well, thank you so much, guys, for having Absolutely. me. It was so fun. Uh, you guys can follow me on on all the things: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever else at the CJ Pearson, and I'll see you there. Perfect. Mary, where can they find you? You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on Twitter. That is also Mary Archived. There and we've got another one. Two from, more there. Uh, Beanbag Actual. I'm off to work, my dudes. Great show and guests as always. Have a great weekend and stay safe. Thank you. Thousand Foot Deep End said, I've had to miss multiple shows this week due to moving to a new apartment, but today's was great to come back to. Have a great weekend. Hashtag hostage crisis. Uh, they're, they're attempting to get a hostage crisis, which is where they super chat us and keep us here until I can finish my outro going very, very fast. So guys, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at Brett Dasvick on Twitter and Facebook. No, it's not uh, It's not Twitter. It's uh, it's X now. Twitter and Instagram at Brett Dasvick. Mary, there's one more there from... Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Where the barbs at? <laughs> Christmas loving engineer said no reference, just an engineer that loves Christmas. Awesome. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, my my guilty pleasure follow accounts on Instagram are like autumn accounts that are just like leaves and trees and stuff like that. I love Christian it. girl so autumn. That's, very, that's yeah. very tranquil. Yes, <laughs> it, is, it is. Ah, I caught that. All right, guys. That was not tranquil. At Brett Dasovic on <laughs> Twitter. I'm still gonna call it Twitter and Instagram. This show is here Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. If you would like to listen to the audio version of this podcast, we are on Amazon Music. Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. And if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on X. There we go. At Pop Culture <laughs> underscore show. Facebook and TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis. One more, Mary from Tom Bombadur. Uh, he said, too slow, Brett old boyo. <laughs> uh, and Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. Guys, we will be back with another episode on Monday. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Later. <laughs>